Hey! Welcome, welcome everybody. Well, hey, look at this. We got 10 people in here right to start. So, welcome oh everyone. Goodness. So excited to be here today. My name is Aaron Moore. We are bringing y'all a brand new adventure, Rhyme of the Frost Maiden. I'm so excited. It's the very beginning of this. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm just super excited. Uh, so, real quick, um, just going to test everything. Can everyone see everything okay? Is the music volume good? I'm going to have everyone do a quick introduction and we'll just do a quick audio test so let's take it down from the top um my name is aaron moore i'm i like to party i'll be your dm today and uh, for the ongoing future and i'm excited to do some role play let's move on to reddish uh hello i prepared no introduction <laughs> Gurgle, I have also prepared no introduction. Oh my goodness, I'm gonna... <laughs> oh, listen, rocks fall and everyone dies. Yeah. So what's the next module? <laughs> good, 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 <laughs> a good session. Have you had good campaign, everyone? <laughs> Alright, Dostanis? Uh, I tend to go by random torrent online, but also unsanctioned knowledge on some places, and I'm playing Dostanis, a trident cleric. And six and six fish. Hello, uh, I go uh, by Onigiri series on Twitch. I'm Emily. Nice to meet everyone. I'm excited to play D and D online. It's gonna be fun. I've never played Icewind Dale, so I'm excited. Oh yeah, you, six fish. Do you stream? I do. Oh, uh, shoot. I play I like Dead by Daylight, and I play like uh, Hell Divers and all that kind of stuff. Just some gameplay for now. Very, very, very new. Well, I send only me started like Twitch a link, ago. and I'll toss it in as like an at in the title or whatever. I can. Anyone else that wants to be uh, promoted as well, just let me know. It's players and toss it in there. Cool. Thanks, Kaya. Sammy, looking sound good. You looking sound good too. Uh, let's get started. So, we are in Icewind Dale. Icewind Dale is a part of the Forgotten Realms, Dungeons and Dragons world, and it is at the very top of the world, the very north, uh, near the spine of the world, they call it. It is a frozen area uh, that is a lot of adventures have been in the past. Um, it's where a lot of the... Um, What's his name, Eric, or Reddish, the uh, Dritz? Uh, what's his name, Dritz Dorden? Yeah, yeah, Dritz Dorden. He uh, spent most of his time here in the Ten Towns in Icewind Dale, and the, um, it's a lot of history here. But we're going to get rid of our mental trappings of the everyday, and we're going to get into a world of imagination. So let's start, everybody. I, I'm going to just read a little cold open here. So Icewind Dale... <laughs> This is the land of the north. It has been trapped in a perpetual winter. Ferocious blizzards make the mountain passes through the spine of the world exceedingly dangerous. And this land has not felt the warmth of the sun in over two years now. In fact, the sun no longer appears above the mountains, not even in what should be the height of summer. In this frozen tundra, darkness and bitter cold reign as king and queen. Most residents of Icewind Dale blame Aril, the Frost Maiden, who is the god of winter. The shimmering aurora that weaves across the sky each night is said to be her doing, a potent spell that keeps the sun at bay. The folk of Icewind Dale live in a scattering of settlements known as Ten Towns, and the sudden drop off in caravans from the south and travel between the settlements um, has decreased uh, significantly, leaving everyone here feeling isolated. Although each town has resolved to appease the Frost Maiden with sacrifices of one kind or another, no respite from winter's fury seems forthcoming. For adventurers such as yourselves, the Icewind Dale is a place to test one's mettle, and in the spirit of heroes who have come before, leave your mark upon this blighted land. 
As we begin, we find ourselves in the largest of these towns, Bryn Shandar. Let's go through the list, and I'm going to have everyone just introduce your character, describe what you look like, um, um, any mannerisms you ha might have, uh, and yeah, so Reddish, we'll start with you. Uh, yeah, so Reddish is a uh, very dapper-looking dwarf, especially considering his surroundings. Uh, he's about five four, five five. Uh, he is of uh, fairly fairly stacked build. Uh, not exactly a brick shit house, but um, he looks like the kind of guy that if you were to let your mouth get away from you, he'd help you put it back in place. Um, he doesn't wear like the typical beard that you would see with a dwarf, uh, but he does have probably the best mustache you've ever fucking seen. That's amazing. I love Hell it. Oh yeah, I love that <laughs> intro. <laughs> it's not gonna be anywhere as good. <laughs> <laughs> you you just do your best, champ. Gurgle. What? Yeah, Gurgle noise. Right. What is your? Uh, describe your character to us. Gurgle is a large, hunkering dragonborn, covered in scars, missing an eye, wears a bandage as an eye patch. He's quite quiet and keeps to himself doesn't really trust people and it's unpredictable. That's really all I got. Is there anybody <laughs> that Gurgle trusts? I mean, I gotta say, the person he's been working with. You trust Reddish? Yeah. That's nice, that's nice. So if anyone doesn't know, Reddish and Gurgle have been working together for a while, uh, doing some fishing work. <laughs> Destanus, please introduce your character to us. Uh, Destanus is a shorter male figure at around five, four, five, five, same as Reddish. However, he very much blends in with the surroundings with his almost like ocean blue skin and chalk white hair that uh, kind of is always kind of kept backwards uh, just by the snow, almost in a permanent frost of where it's positioned. Uh, long ears that get him mistaken for an elf fairly often his trident heritage only really visible once you uh, take a closer glimpse at him with some loose scarrings around his arms and neck uh, that he doesn't really speak much on as he arrives here as he does to many other places just in a quiet motion going from place to place awesome I love it uh, do you, are you telling people what you are? Uh, class wise or? Or a, a rate of species wise. Trident. Oh, you said that. Okay, cool. Mm, yeah. Uh, six fish. <laughs> Real quick, for those of us yes. not in the know, what the, what the fuck's a Triton? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's uh, a thing, but it's a long pole and it has three prongs. And, oh, wait. Never mind. It's a, oh, it's a fork. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. yeah, I'm a fourth He's race. A fork. <laughs> Basically. I fault. I'm like a weird offshoot of a sea elf. There you go. Okay. Mm. Thank you. Of He's course. A mermaid. Merman. Merman. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't be the first time someone's called him that. Probably. Oh my god, I love it. I love it. <laughs> All right, six fish. All right. So uh, Six Fish is kind of like a big, tall, kind of imposing uh, tabaxi, but she's like kind of based more off of like a lion, uh, specifically like something called an iron claw tabaxi. Uh, but basically, yeah, she's just this big uh, kind of imposing lady. She uh, has a very confident air about her. Like she's kind of almost always half posing as if like, expecting somebody to be looking at her uh she is a gladiator that <laughs> is a barbarian um you know she thrills in the excitement of combat and physical contest basically but uh she's from the icewind dale and has been traveling kind of all around and just recently kind of returned uh when she heard about the strange going ons in the world but yeah but she's pretty normal looking you know big tall Lion lady, she's got like a green cloth tied around her wrist for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. 
great. That's amazing. I love it. I love it. So, we find our adventurers in Bryn Shandar. This is the largest town in Icewind Dale. It's got about... Uh, about 1,200 people that live here. Uh, with a number of bar of taverns and, and places. This is the place that has probably has the most amount of culture in all of Icewind Dale. Um, and Reddish, you have found, heard about the Black Iron Blades, a, 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 shop, a shop here in Icewind Dale that uh, is having some issues that um, they need help with. Not really sure what, though. And um, I know you have Gurgle with you, Gurgle Noise. Um, and we're going to say you two are thinking about taking on this contract when, or, you know, the thing about going and investigating this job, when you run into an old friend, someone who used to eat a lot of your fish and sometimes stole them. What? It is you. I thought I saw you from across the room. Well, so how are you doing today? Jesus Christ, I d oh, I'm what? out. We don't have it. No, we don't have any. No, but do you have any fish at all? <laughs> uh, I suppose we have some, but it's not its not the stuff you want to be eating. Well, I'm just going to, let me just, uh, she kind of like starts looking for it. <laughs> uh, Reddish will sort of just kind of reach into the, the crate and just kind of pull out a fish. It looks a little... It's seen better days. It should have been sushi like a week ago. She it essentially tries to snatch it straight out of his hand and, like, gobble it up immediately. I'll let it go. It, it's, you know, it's, it's cheaper to just give it away for free at this point. I'm going to say, at this moment, you see a... Uh, how tall are you, Distanis? Uh, Dishonest isn't very tall. He's like right five four, short, nearing five five. Usually a shorter, a uh, slender built, um, blue skinned person approaching you. Um, and Dishonest has recently treated six fish for uh, food poisoning, and is very upset to <laughs> see their patient. <laughs> she has like mid mouthful. She looks over at Dishonest. Is oh hello, okay, oh, oh my goodness, such a small world. I would have hoped for better. A better world? Yes, me too. <laughs> Certainly. <laughs> Maybe in a better world, you wouldn't already be doing exactly what I told you not to. She, like, kind of burps at that and is parted? <sighs> I'll simply accept this as the way you are. She gives him a thumbs up. It's far. She, she's got an iron stomach. She, it'd be all right. Oh, At that, she I, will like I, pose and slap her stomach. Like you're darn right, I do. Iron eventually does rust away as well. <laughs> she kind of like looks at her, like she that confused her. <laughs> this is happening. What do you do, Gurgle? I'm just sitting back, admiring. Shaking my head. And wait, are you, do you are you shaking your head in an approval or disapproval at the uh, rotten fish eating? Disapproval. Oh, I was going to use that as bait. <laughs> <laughs> um, reddish. Maybe you want to invite your friends uh, to go see the black iron blades. Wink, wink. Uh, yeah. So what? A fortunate coincidence that we all should happen to meet right at this time and location. Uh, we are uh, indeed. We are. We're getting ready to go see uh, those Black Iron Boys uh, about potentially making a bit of coin. Ah. Uh, Six fish's uh, ears will perk up at the mention of coin. Yeah, that, that means you could pay for the next fish. She'll yeah. give a big grin. Stutless will just kind of slowly shake his head like she's not gonna pay. <laughs> and then look back at Reddish and go, Of course, depending on 
the personnel required, I may be of assistance. There you go. That's a spirit. Where are they? That's a fantastic question that I know the answer to. <laughs> so I'm going to uh, say you guys... And we will head that direction. <laughs> so you guys are here in the... Uh, what is my pointer? Oh, that's not pointer. This is pointer. You're all here in the marketplace, Ooh. and you're going to head on up to Black Iron Blades. So you all head on up... Uh, and you uh, arrive in a little shop. Actually, I think it might have a picture. Ooh. This um spot. Oh, I didn't want to do that. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Um Can someone delete that? Stop moving it. It's freaking <laughs> it's breaking everything. Oh no. Did that work? Did you delete it? I did. It's gone on our side. Yeah, I'm just going to refresh yeah. my page. <laughs> The magic of the internet. Woo! Truly marvelous. There we go, there we go. Okay, cool. We are back in business. Woo! There we go. So you guys head in from the cold into this uh, blacksmith room. You see uh, three cloaked figures in here. It's all still very cold, even though there is a warmth coming off of the heart, the uh, forge. Um, there's three stocky figures in there, and um, one of them turns to reddish instantly, and he goes, "Ah, good to see you, brother!" And he like takes his big hand and like does this cool secret dwarven handshake with you. Yeah, we're we like you know like yeah Every, no one else knows what you're doing but you you tell you two totally connect what are they doing <laughs> i think they're dancing why are they interlocking <laughs> fingers i uh, must welcome be something. Uh, my name oh, is haruna uh, new reddish uh, wh who are your friends here uh you know i don't like to speak for the group and i'll, and I'll turn to everyone they can introduce themselves Oh, oh yes, uh, nice to meet you all. He shook his uh, hand to uh, shake yours. She'll grab it with both hands, like, really hard. Oh, I like this one. She's very strong. So six fish at your service. Oh, nice to meet you, six fish. And, uh, oh, you're, uh, you're looking quite blue there, friend. Are you all right? Yes, this is my natural skin color. Oh, that's fascinating. Mm -hmm. Thank you. A pleasure to meet you. Can you like extend his hand. And your name? Uh, the Stannis. Oh, nice to meet you. And, and you owe us a dragonborn. Not many of them around. You wouldn't be able to pronounce my name. I mean, I, I you can try me. I have uh, quite a strong vocabulary. Just, just, just call, call me Gurgle. Gurgle. All right. Nice to meet you, Gurgle. Uh, how can I help you, Reddish? Well, I heard some muttering about town that perhaps you uh, you needed a bit of outside services. Something about ore and slants oh, and... I, mean, I don't know. Look, man, I'm a, it, times is tough. We all need a bit of cash, so... Well, I thought you were just, like a fisher guy. You're going to go do the whole adventure <laughs> thing now, eh? I mean, you know, fishing is... It's not bad, but uh, it's been a bit rough with the whole, you know, always being fucking night. It uh, it's thrown off the circadian rhythm of all the fish. You gotta respect your circadian rhythms. It's very important. Yeah. Yes, yes. Oh well, um, I never expected you to be an adventurer, but yeah, of course, we, we definitely need help. Uh, well, let's see. Um. All right. Well, 
So the problem is, uh, you know, my name's Runa, and I work the forge, but Korok's here, and Storn, he points to two other dwarves um, that look like they've um, just come in from the cold. They still kind of have some ice in their beards, and they look a little bit shooken up. Uh, I'll, I'll let uh, Storn tell you what happened. <clears throat> Uh, Storn, the dwarf, turns and he looks at you with kind of haggard eyes. He says, where are the uh, survivors of a group of dwarves? We are tasked with delivering a sled of ingots up here to Bryn Chandar, but oh, somehow a yeti came out of the snow and surprised us and killed a member of our group. Oh, poor Ubuk, the yeti just tore him limb from limb. This is gore, it was terrible, but we just ran out of there as fast as we could. There's no way we could fight a Yeti on our own. Yes, so, that's true. Fucking Yeti? Yes, a Yeti. So we, we ran out here uh, through the through the storm and, and got away from him. Um, if you could get the sled back for us, so that would be fantastic. We can give you uh, 50 gold each and, um, you know, offer the friendship of uh, the dwarves of Icewind Dale to, you know, the others. Obviously, Reddish already has it. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, I mean, that's, that's not a small bit of coin. It it almost sounds too easy, given the price. What are you What are you not telling us? Well, there's a yeti out there. It's a scary right. I yeti. Got that part, like, but... you know, rawr. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, like, they walk around, right? He's not like, he's not like sitting on it. They have very good camouflage. This is also true. Yes. I have no idea. And they took my friend and took, they popped his arms off like it was a piece of string cheese. It was terrible. Well, they usually think of it more like a Lego or something. Oh. What, is, what are all these old words that are being used? Yes, I'm not sure what a Lego is either, but... My vocabulary is nowhere near expensive. As expensive. Apologies. Right. So, are, are we trying to bring your your buddy back too? The corpse? Oh, I, think I mean, he's done for. I mean, the poor old book. Yes, if we give I him mean, a burial, but the, I'm assuming he's hope. I hope he hasn't gotten eaten. The yeti ate him. Oh, oh my poor old book. He was such a good friend. Probably a good meal too. Oh no! Oh, fuck. I'm, so, the fuck. Uh, I'm sorry. I, uh... you. <laughs> the I dwarves kind of saw the dwarves are all extremely suspicious. <laughs> six fish now. Yeah, I'll, I kind of turned to gargle and be like, "Hey, keep a keep a fucking eye on her." <laughs> um. Yes. Um. But we can do that, and we can uh, if, you, if you deliver the sled back, we will uh, give you discounts here at the Black Iron Blades going forward for sure. Right, yeah, no, because that, that absolutely matters to me because I care about my standing in the community. Um, yes. Right. Any, uh, can you kind of give us a general idea and I'll, like, hand him our, our crude map of Icewind Dale? But can you just give me, like, a, you know, a general layout of where we where he was? Oh, yes, absolutely. Let me look here. Let's see. Well, it's... Let me find it on the map, but currently it is to the south, about um, five miles south of Bryn Shandar. He's like, if you follow... Um, you should be able to follow our tracks without too much effort. I can take you to where, uh, where we came in from town if you want to pick up the tracks from there. Oh, five miles. Oh, five miles. We could be there and back today. You'll need snowshoes, yeah, though, I believe. It's going to be very snowy out. And it's very cold. Do not leave unless you have proper gear. You'll freeze to death. So I would... Obviously, I don't have it on my character sheet, but I would assume that living here, we all have that kind of gear? Uh, I'm going to say uh, not snowshoes. You could buy the... Oh, the no, I wouldn't say snowshoes. I'll say you can start with cold weather. Like, you probably all have good jackets and stuff. Okay. 
Um, and so just a little FYI, out of character, um, you can travel um, one mile an hour uh, with dog sled. You can go half a mile an hour uh, with snowshoes or a quarter mile an hour without snowshoes. Mm. Sorry, I just want to dog write sled. this down. Yeah, right. It would take <laughs> majority of the day to get there on foot. Fuck. <laughs> Yes, travel here is very difficult ever since the everlasting winter visited us. Yeah, it seems like I came home at the wrong fucking time. Um, I we we should have some. If you if you will go, we can probably lend you some snowshoes, though. I think. Oh, uh, it'll be very helpful if you would. Yeah. Um, yeah, so he gives you all uh, a pair of snowshoes. Also, he's like that yet he's um, tell you what here. Also, just to make sure you get back in one piece, and he gives you each a uh, potion of healing. Ooh. My job is defunct. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you need to time to repair anything, or do you want to go right now? And I can show you where the where the trail uh, began. Oh, I mean, unless anyone has something pressing, based off my fantastic math calculations, we are going to be out there for fucking ever, so we should probably get moving. Not very good at math. Absolutely. <laughs> that is good math. Yeah, that's that 18 intelligence, boy. I don't trust <laughs> others' decision in this field. So awesome. So um, Storm leads you out to the southern gate here. And um, as you pass, you can see they have a large fortifying wall protecting against barbarians and monsters in the out uh, of the outlands. You pass through the well-armed gate and into the snowy, dark uh, tundra beyond. A storm guides you up and shows you where the tracks are. And you can see the footprints of uh, three dwarves. Or, sorry, two dwarves um, that have come back. It's fairly obvious where they are in the snow. He's like, well, uh, you just gotta head out that way. In about five miles, you will hopefully come across a sled. Uh, good luck. He pats you on the back and uh, walks back to the town, leaving you all in peace. Is there anything you guys want to do or talk about before you depart? Ah, uh, you know, if we're going to be gone for actually quite a long time, we might want to actually find some more food before we go out. Uh, I need to run to the market real quick, actually. I forgot something. You're going to go steal it? Oh my goodness, the How could you insinuate? Sorry. Probably, yes, so actually, cute. yes, I'm but sorry. I'm going to go now. I, I will follow her. She will slowly start walking behind her. No, come on, let's go. We have, uh, what is it, deadline to meet, so let's go. Yeah, Stunts much... immediately regrets his decision. <laughs> She's like jogging, basically. Wait, where are you jogging, Six Fish? Back to the marketplace real oh, okay. quick to buy the thing <laughs> that I sent you a message about. Oh. <laughs> I'm just slowly tailing yes, behind. Yes, you can absolutely buy something like that. Hell yeah. Um, yeah, so how much food do you guys have on you right now? How much do supplies? Are you, um... Absolutely none. <laughs> okay. Um, we got about bro. five days. Five days of rations. Okay, that's that's helpful. I, um... Would anybody like to buy any rations or anything at the marketplace? I'm gonna Maybe. send you a thing real quick, Gurgle, so you know what the prices are. Gotcha. Um, I have I have rations I'm gonna buy uh, three more rations yeah I'll follow that same train yeah I'm gonna also pick up four cause I'm a hungry boy mm -hmm. I have 20 pounds of rations. You have 20 pounds of rations on you? 
Yes. Dang. How do you? That's a lot. It's yeah, 10 so, rations. So 20 pounds. 10 days. Okay. Yeah. So you're good. Yeah. You need to think one ration is enough food for one day, right? Yeah. Okay. So, um, who, who should have taken a to... good berry spell? All right. So who's gonna buy <laughs> rations? Me. Okay. Just yeah. deduct Just the amount you're gonna days. buy with the gold. And there's a ton of market vendors in here. They're all. Um, um, you can easily find that available here. So awesome. We'll just say you buy that and purchase those things off camera. Does anybody else want to buy anything at the market? A glass eye. A glass Hell yeah. eye? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Roll investigation. Let's see if you can find a glass eye. What? So you're looking at your character sheet. You're going to find the investigation, oh. and you're going to click that little plus there. Investigate. Uh, so it'll be on your um, the big list of all things like acrobatics, animal handling. Oh, okay. You have a plus three to investigation. it. Investigation. So plus three. Yep. Yep. And you got okay. a. Nineteen. Twenty-two. Jesus. Nice. Um, that's a wildly good roll. You will find the one place in here. <laughs> a, um, a gnome is um, selling a, a, he has like a little glass shop and he, um, he makes all kinds of different glass objects, lots of like pipes and things too. <laughs> he creates a lot of like, um, but he also has like glens, glass lenses, like monoc like little monocles or little like bifocals mm -hmm. that they have, you know. And he's got a little tinker bench, and he's sitting there uh, grinding away at some glass and kind of looks up. Hey, uh, can I help you? Yeah, I'd like to stop wearing this bandage. Got anything that'll complement my other eye? Oh, um, what's underneath the bandage? A hole. Oh, that sounds that sounds really gross. Can I see it? Take the bandage off. Oh, Showing Jesus! A fly yeah. comes out. Well, Thander. Oh. oh my goodness, Thander's grace. Let me take a look at this. Oh boy, you got some problems in there, don't you, bud? Mm-hmm. Have you seen a Have you seen a Have you seen a doctor? What's a doctor? Oh. Um, you should see a cleric about this one. Um, this looks, this looks bad. Here, I got a. Is everybody here with you, or are you by yourself? I could be by myself. This Thomas is still trailing six fish, so she doesn't get into more <laughs> trouble. All right. Um, he's like, all right. Well, he, here's what I got for you. Um, let me hand you. He's like, I have, I do have some eyes, but. You're gonna need some healing first before you can pop that in, all right? Um, here's uh, here's my collection. He opens his little box, and in there is a series of glass eyes. There's a red one, a yellow one, blue one, a purple, um, like a really pretty cobalt. There's a bunch of different colors in there. Is there any that um, excite, make you excited that you'd like to buy? Reach for the purple one. Oh, oh yeah! Oh, you like the purple? Oh, isn't that nice? Yes. Um, I will sell it to you for fifty gold. Hmm. Drive a hard bargain, but why the hell not? Oh, all right. <laughs> Wait, do you have fifty gold? Okay, you don't have a thousand gold. Why do you have a thousand <laughs> gold in your inventory sheet, girl? Noise. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> He's just been like secretly taking from the bank the whole time. <laughs> Every time they got bank. profit. Every time they got profit, he just secretly pocketed half. Yeah. How much how much gold do you all have? I have, I three, have... three gold. Uh after buying those rations, I have eight. What did you start with though? Yeah, eight as well. I started with ten. I started yeah, with ten. fifteen. I don't know how I started with a thousand. Because I also bought a tent and hide armor. Okay, well now... Just secretly rich. We just, none of us are aware. 
We could have yeah. fucking retired this whole goddamn time. <laughs> we don't even uh, need to uh, be adventurers. I Campaign over. I just like the color. <laughs> okay, you have 15 gold now. Okay. Well, it appears I don't have 50. Oh, well, I am sorry, friend. Um, I do offer uh, discounts, you know, for the disabled, um, but if you'll need at least a... Uh, you can come back when you have more gold. Ah, uh, well. Uh, disgusting bandage back on. Go get that eye looked at first, anyway. You need healing. It's, look, it's like infected or something. I'll see. <laughs> So Gurgle departs and meets up back with the team. What's everyone else doing? I'm ready to go. Blending in with the background, all the snow. Yeah, Ruddish is just kind of hanging out by the gate. Six fish will walk up. Right, right, I think we're all here. We just have to wait for uh, this, 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 the, this, the bucket. And um, then we can head out whenever they get back. Yeah, right. Yeah. Always waiting. Story my fucking life. I love it's unfortunate. It. So you guys all meet back up at the southern gates with your equipment, with all your stuff ready to go, with your snowshoes and your winter gear. And you set out to the south. Hiking through the tundra. Anything you guys want to talk about or do on your hike? Uh, I don't have any particularly interesting cop topics of conversation, but I will be bitching about the cold the entire way. Love it. <laughs> it is very cold. It is bitter. Um, but it is dark out. You don't have to worry about snow blindness. That's good. Um, and just regular guys... blindness. Just regular blindness. <laughs> yeah, just regular blindness. Um, as you guys uh, continue down the path, you make it about a mile, about two miles away from Boulder's Gate, or uh, sorry, from Bryn Shandar. Bryn Boulder's Gate? <laughs> well, oh, that's no. farther to the south. It's farther to the south. <laughs> um, as you approach, um, you start to notice a little change in the air. It starts to be a little bit nippier, and you start feeling like ice crystals kind of hitting you. The wind's starting to pick up, and you realize a telltale sign of a blizzard approaching. Um, if you do not stop and wait, um, you could lose your bearings, veer off course. Uh, you feel the wind start to howl um, as it starts to reduce your vision. It's hard to see. Uh, things are getting... Um, the tracks in front of you are starting to be erased in the snow. You can't see more than 30 feet in front of you. Uh... Does anybody, did anybody bring snow goggles? Oh, yeah, no, absolutely. Of course I brought snow oh. goggles. You all have disadvantage oh, on perception checks. <laughs> I'm already disadvantaged. <laughs> and if you try to concentrate on Wait, a spell during this blizzard. I'm sorry, DM, but our yes. clothing cold weather that you gave us has goggles. Oh, oh damn it. Good, oh. good job. Good job, oh, Six Fish. Look what good I found. Job. I yeah. guess you all have. See, we weren't kidding. <laughs> Obviously, we have Big snow cat goggles. Little goggles on right now, just <laughs> trudging through that snow. Love it. Ish, where did you get those goggles? It's in the starting gear that God gave us. <laughs> oh, pardon me. I was unaware. Let me go through. Let me rummage through my pack once again. And if you try to concentrate in a spell during this blizzard, you have to do a con. Do you see ten con save at the end of every turn, or you lose the spell save? What the fuck? Yeah, it is rough being in a blizzard. So as this blizzard starts to happen, go, you, you kind of crest this this kind of like um, little hill, and you kind of see another, like a dip, another hill kind of coming up. Um, you realize this is going to be a pretty serious blizzard. What does the team do? So real, real quick question for you, DM. You said it's snow coming down. Yeah. Is snow water? It's frozen water. Yes. Okay. Uh, so what I would like to do is in a five foot cube around us, direct the snow, essentially creating like a bubble okay. as we move. How do you want to do using that? The, using the shape water cantrip. Oh. That's creative, that's cool. It says uh, you can instantaneously move or otherwise change the flow of water as you direct up to five feet in any direction. 
Uh, it doesn't have enough force to cause damage. So I feel like that is really powerful and really good. That is really good for a five foot cube. Is that gonna contain the whole party though? Because I think uh, each of you are five I'm, foot. I'm quite cubes. large. Uh, maybe if we squeeze real close together. Yeah, I'd say that you can get close together and like back to back or something and like stay stationary and put it up. I think it'd be pretty hard to move and keep. I just hold going, back. Right? Plus, wouldn't you have to basically cast the spell every six seconds? <laughs> That's fine. It's instantaneous. <laughs> and it's the the components are somatic, so it's just me going get the fuck out the way. He's actually just punching the snowflakes out of the way. <laughs> I love it. Um, yeah, so I'll, I will totally say that you could stay there and not move and have some relative measure of protection against the snowflakes themselves, but not the wind with control water. Okay. So that's, that's awesome. Fair. It could be useful while we uh, talk about where we're going to go in this blizzard because these clothes are nice but they do not uh, hold up so well when they get water on them i think it'd be Mine's best already to hold. find a area to hunker down for the time being prolonged hey, travel in this condition is ill-advised uh so who see. knows a thing or two about surviving in the wild I don't know, I woke up in the water. Yeah. Right, not the best place for a nap. No. Um, I would not recommend it. Nope. So, uh, DM, being like a native to this area, do I know of any like caves perhaps? Or I somewhere did. where we could seek like a temporary refuge? Yeah, you roll survival for that. Oh God, don't make me do that. <laughs> uh, okay. Oh, first roll of the game. Fuck me, running. Uh huh. Um. That is going a to be nine. a nine. You do not see much that could be of help in this area. You're not super familiar with the wild south of Bryn Shandar. So, everyone, look at your character sheet. Is there anything that you want, any skill you want to use, anything you want to do? If you can think of something that you can do to help the party during this blizzard, I will think of a dice for you to roll on that. Either a skill or an ability or a tool you have. Is there anything else you want to do other than Reddish's uh, holding oh. away from the snowflakes? Let's see. Let's see. I'd like to scan kind of the area to see if maybe I can like spot something that would say like, oh, maybe there's a cave over there or oh, that place looks good. And you maybe use perception. Absolutely. All right. What about you, Destanis? Mm -hmm. Can I just help out uh, Six Fish and give her advantage? Sure. You can help look Ooh, for I help appreciate out. that. Gurgle Noise, is there anything you want to do to help with the team? Mm -hmm. I mean, I have plus one nature. So. Oh, I do whatever. I don't know. Maybe you can help me identify what I spot. Yeah, that could work. Sure, roll your roll your survival or your uh, okay. perception. Sixteen. A Sixteen. Um, looking around, you do see what could be like a small rocky outcropping, kind of near the bottom of of a dip. It might Ooh. be some protection from the wind if you can kind of dip in there. Yeah, she points it out uh, and. Ah, uh, perhaps something over there? What do you think? It could, it could supply adequate cover. Yeah, roll nature. Why don't you do that? Let's see what you think. Roll nature. Nature. Let's see. A seven. seven. Um, you're not really sure what to do here, but you do, you are a big, strong, uh, uh, dragonborn and you start using your, uh, claws and you kind of push some of the snow out of the way make a little spot for people. And I'm going to say you can all get in there into this little kind of alcove, hide from the wind and the reddish will kind of keep the snow off of people with this little, like, umbrella of control water <laughs> above your heads. Right. Um, it, you guys are holed up into this little tiny cave, it's like, like just not even a cave, it's very cold right now, you are not comfortable, 
Um, you're squeezed very close together for body heat and because Reddish's shield does not extend very far at all. So you're uncomfortably close together. And you're going to be here for... Can I not just roll days. dice? Um, somebody <laughs> roll me 2d4. 2d4. Oops. Let's see. Alright, we got reddish Whoa. in there. So three hours you are stuck in this hole. What do you guys do for three Whoa. hours? Does anybody I just want have to... a deck of cards? <laughs> Actually, I might. Hold on. Let me check. I, I just want to say whoever's idea this was, it was fucking stupid. I think this was your idea. <laughs> Easy. Don't, don't look at me. <laughs> Sorry. It's amazing. So, so uh, Reddish, uh, that fish that uh, you gave me just a, a while ago, uh, it, uh, uh, I don't know how to say this, but it makes my tummy a little gurgle. Yeah, um, so oh, no. you were, you were a bit too, uh, uh, excited for it. I didn't get a chance to tell you. You probably shouldn't have eaten it in the first place. That was my bait fish. Make a constitution saving throw, six fish, please. Make no, a con save, not more shoot your pants. <laughs> that thing's been stewing in the sun for three days. Sixteen. All right, all right, um... Yeah, six fish is, is holding it in, but it is a little gassy in this. Uh, <laughs> I think for the oh, wind, kind of oh. takes it mostly away. But every now and then, you get a little whiff, and you're just like, "What the hell?" <laughs> what the... Um, oh my god! Is there anything you guys want to make your stay a little more comfortable here? Um, uh, I will. I'll kind of light up the small domain and just kind of like chase a uh place my shield in the center of the area and then i'll just cast light on it just so that the area immediate area around us is little oh, nice you have a nice little light yeah, really nice anybody else um i mean i'm gonna untie the tent from my bag and like mm -hmm. see if anybody can help me like use it to kind of cover oh the whole... awesome yeah, yeah, you, you go and you pull your tent up, and the tent kind of, like, covers the spots that Reddish's cantrip doesn't really cover, and it helps put it up against the wind, and you guys wait out of the storm. After about three hours, the, uh, the uh, winds and snow subside, and you are left with a beautiful starry night. Um, it does look like the snow has completely, the tracks have been completely gone. From before. Fucking perfect. Mm. Just perfect. So, what do you guys do? Oh. Uh, well, this is yeah. quite unfortunate. I don't suppose anybody here really is particularly good at tracking, are they? I'm decent. That would be the survival skill. I'm fairly wise. <laughs> yeah, if you want to roll survival and try to find that and get advantage from somebody, that's fine. I'll do. Who's helping me out? I could try to help sniff out. I got a track. plus three. How do I roll with advantage? I just roll twice. 15 is my higher. 15. Yeah, um, you are able to go and you can see where like the snow is filled in the tracks, but you can kind of just barely check it out and see where the, you think it's going and are able to lead the party to the south. Um, thanks to Destanus and um, your all of your eyes, you're able to keep moving through. As the day progresses... You keep kind of going over ridges and this tundra, snowing, you know, it's, it's very slow moving because you're going over really thick snow, especially because it's been blown up by the blizzard. So it's a very fresh powder now. But eventually you crest a snow covered ridge and you see a frozen dismembered corpse laying in the gully in front of you. Snow covers mm. most of the gory bits, but the headless torso and severed arms are still visible. 
You see tracks in the snow all around the corpse and the telltale grooves in the snow left behind by a sled that has been hauled away. Great. Stonus will kind of like move over towards it uh, and take a knee in front of it and then like kind of bow his head as he'll like start speaking like some some verses just oh, over nice. the body. That's awesome. I like that. So you see Destanus kind of do a prayer over the body. What did the rest of everybody do? Uh, I'll just keep walking towards the, the sled tracks. Oh. Um, Reddish ignores the body, goes to the sled tracks. Um, you can try to make a survival check to see where they went or a bit more about them. Uh, oh, that's okay. Yes, with a 14, you definitely can tell. So what you see is, um, you definitely see that the sled, there are two like, parallel tracks in the snow that have been pulled away. Even with the blizzard, you can still make <clears> it out. This was so deep. But you also notice that there are about half a dozen other tracks in here. Small humanoids uh, must be. And it looks like they're wearing snowshoes. Uh Kind of turn back to the rest of the group. Uh, just an idea. If we go get the sled, we can come back for the body. He's he's not going anywhere. It would be more worrying if he did. Um, Destanus, you instantly okay. realize this is a dwarf body as well when you get close to it. It is dwarven in nature, so we are certain of at least that. And you can tell that his arms have been eaten and most of his internal organs as well. Oh. And judging based off of everything else, I would fetch to assume that this is the individual that they spoke of. Given the areas of injury. Should we bring back the body? I mean, it wouldn't, wouldn't be a bad idea. I'm sure they want to put their body down to a, uh, a proper burial. Right. right, actually, just for the record, if I fucking go down out here, you assholes bring me home. Don't let me fucking rot the snow. <laughs> Preferably, I don't think anyone wants to do that. Okay. You know, uh, not to say that anything is, uh, that, why would the Yeti leave its food behind? Oh, I just kind of assumed he had his fill. You ever have like a really nice sandwich, but ah. you know you don't have room for the whole thing? Yeah. Right. Wouldn't you want Maybe. to store it somewhere close in case you get hungry again? I mean, yeah, hmm. it is just kind of one giant refrigerator out here. Yeah. <clears throat> they do seem. To Maybe be we honest, should not be so quick to always blame the Yeti. Are you sympathizing with the Yeti? I don't exactly know what that word means, but... Yes. Neither do I. I've merely heard people use it around me. I oh, thought this was fitting. That works then. Um, I don't know then. Okay. Well, there seems to be other pairs of footprints at the very least, so we should mm. be wary. I just grab the corpse and just throw it on my back. Oh, uh, it wild. Just, just. Oh. <laughs> All right. I'll bring it oh, back. How, how are you holding it? The arms are gone. Oh, I got one of the legs <laughs> okay. right over my shoulder. <laughs> Dear Lord, uh, holding it by the ankle. This is certainly a method. When we retrieve the sled, let us not put him there. Or let us not keep him over our bodies. That's awesome. Ready if you would like to continue leading? <laughs> well, I don't know if it's a good idea if I fucking lead, but yeah, sure, why not? I have faith in you. Uh... 
So yeah, I guess we'll continue to follow the slut tracks I cautiously. Um, so you guys uh, keep on heading down, uh, following the tracks, going through the tundra, navigating the, the, the snow drifts and everything. Eventually, you notice something far in the distance. The creatures that you've been following appear to be goblins based on their stature. You see all six of them groaning, grunting, and cursing loudly as they haul the bulky sled toward what appears to be a large wagon parked in the snow. And harnessed to this wagon are two roaring polar bears that do not look happy at all. Oh, so majestic. Right, yeah, let's, uh, polar bears are pretty fucking cool. And dangerous, and I think we should bear that in mind. Right, yeah, you, you go ahead and think about that. Um, yeah. Sorry, you said how many goblins are there? So, oh, look at that. you should see on the map here <laughs> that you see this long uh, stretch of snowy wilderness in front of you this, with these uh, six goblins pushing this cart. And then up ahead, you see another uh, set of two goblins plus one that looks like the another goblin looks like a little bit bigger and scarier than the rest, along with two large polar bears who are very unhappy. This wagon is stationary. Um, it's not moving. This one is moving. These guys are having a really hard time trying to push it, and it looks like they're trying to push this wagon to meet up with the bigger one. You guys are all down here. Back down yonder. Let's see here, yep. So, you see the goblins. The goblins do not see you yet. They are focused on the cart. You have time to plan to figure out what you're going to do. But the goal is to get that cart back. What are you going to do, team? Are you going to risk it? Are you going to fight the goblins? Do any of us speak goblin? Mm. If by speak goblin you mean I can gibber incoherently, yeah, absolutely. So can you speak goblin? <laughs> what did I just say? It sounds like he said he can, so if, if we're going to talk if to you him, you can take drink in me, I can. Oh, how marvelous the tongue is. Can anyone actually speak goblin? No. You. Perfect. <laughs> it was not a language I, it was not a language I was taught, unfortunately. I think. That's uh, just how you yeah, sound when no. you're drunk. So are we hold on, are we saying that diplomacy is the way to go for a bunch of goblins who are stealing? Uh No, personally I would like to bash their heads in with this hammer. See, well, I don't I, think uh, murder is necessarily the answer. Oh, I don't know. I think I, I think fish might be onto something here. Yeah, yes, they always uh, they would always be trying to sneak into our cave. I mean, uh, you know, my house. I don't right, yeah, and I'm sure they had, had very bad intentions. You just said. Well, they seem to be about halfway there, so we should decide soon. I would prefer not to kill anyone, however, if that is the best course of action, then I will not stop. I will supply my aid. I guess then we could just try to ask them real nice like, and she'll crack her knuckles. I don't think you plan on using your words. She'll give a grin. Actions oh. speak louder than words. So I've heard. Okay. I'll follow. I'm gonna hit I love it. I love body. it. The status looks at everyone else like, who's gonna go in though? Because <laughs> I'm not doing it. All right, I start to move forward. So what's the plan? You're gonna go up and, and talk to them? 
Okay. If we all move forward, maybe we can get the jump on them, as it were. Treat them like you're hunting in the wild. Be still, be snail. Oh, I don't hunt. I mm. buy my food. I see. Well, ah. Uh... This may be a good time I, to actually ask I'm what is everybody good at. <laughs> oh. Sure they got some I'm a medicine man. Of... Oh. I'm just, if we're if we're moving towards the goblins, I'm just going to mm-hmm. hold a firebolt until we get within 120 feet. Well, yeah, so that's the thing. Are you going to um, try to surprise them and attack? Are you going to try to, like, um, speak with them and negotiate? If you want, I can try to get up and convince them to give us the thing. And then if they attack me, I don't mind. I hold my own. But if you guys want to hang back and shoot off if things go wrong, that sounds great. I'll go alongside you then to provide you some aid. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm In not hanging things back. Go I'm okay. Let's just fucking let's just do the thing. Let's All right. Go. All right, you're all moving forward. Okay, so wait, I just don't know what the plan is. Attack or negotiate? You got to decide before you move forward. Okay, no los dos. Negotiate until they attack, and then we right, exhibit right. justice. So the whole Aggressive team negotiations. is going to move forward. So I'll say you can move forward within 60 feet of them, which would be... Uh... Yeah, that's perfect. Move up to the 60 feet, everybody. And as you get close, they still haven't noticed you. They're very focused on the cart. They're very, um, it's very heavy. It looks like as you get close, you realize it's full of like metal ore. Um, who's going to, who do you, what do you do? Right. Obviously we have the most convincing one do it. Six fish. I think it's best if you're the one that speaks to them. I've got this. All right. Um, can oh, I continue ahead. to approach somewhat, like... Yeah, you take a like, couple steps get... forward and then speak to them. Well, if I don't speak to them until I'm within, like, 30 feet of them, would I be able to do that? Um, I'm gonna say they're, um... I give a stealth check? <laughs> sure, yeah, you can stealth up to them, <laughs> absolutely. Yes, yeah, so that, right. that's the that's the point you can get to them without them, like, noticing, but you're gonna okay. be stealthy to getting closer. Okay. So be a 13. Ah, oh, I got oh. a 10. <laughs> so as you're sneaking up behind them, I'm going to say you get about halfway before they notice. Um, um, and as you're sneaking, they one of them turns behind and just notices terrifying, huge tabaxi with, like, the, the big hair and the, <laughs> mm-hmm. and the, the goblin screams. And, yeah. Ah, attack, attack, we're getting attacked. Um, instantly, all the goblins turn around with their spears pointed out. Um, do you say or do anything? Uh, she's going to draw her maul and just, like, in the loudest voice that she can muster, she's just going to be like, Return the pot to us and none of you have to die. If oh. you don't, well, we're all going to crush you into tiny, tiny, little, tiny, tiny things. Oh, damn. Oh. Um, I'm roll... convinced. Yeah, I'm convinced. Roll intimidation. I'll say it's another DC. I'll say it's a DC uh, 13. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> um, holy shit. The <laughs> <laughs> This cart is not worth your life. Live now or this hammer will be the last thing you see. Um the Uh, you see the the six goblins just take the hell off. They are not having this. They're not yeah. digging it. <laughs> they each hell run yeah. away. Towards just slam their, her hammer uh, down into the ground as they flee. <laughs> towards there. Um, as you get up here, you see this one start screaming at them in Goblin and just like, like, you can't really tell what they're saying, but it doesn't look very happy at all. Um, what do you guys do? Uh, she's still kind of like beating her chest after slamming like the thing down into the ground. Six, a little too already. 
six there. I'm just gonna let you continue. Let's get the company. It seems as though they're being screamed at. Let us leave before they start screaming at us. Sorry, sorry, of course. Um, you see this goblin hop down off of the wet. Actually, no, it stays up here, but it, it, it starts yelling at you. You can hear it over the snow, and it's just like, Who are you? The ones that are taking this sled. <laughs> um, the body in the sled? Yeah, I think... At this point, the goblins are terrified, and they're gonna run away. <laughs> I don't blame them. Uh, it's yeah, scary. no, that was uh, <sighs> um, hell yeah, great job. You guys see the goblins say, um, you know, they, <laughs> they raise a big old middle finger, is like, you know, uh, this is. Uh, Make some swears to um, Gobbleyuk or whoever their deity is, and they uh, yeah, Gobbledygook, the goblin deity, of course. They all just <laughs> take off. Gobbledygook. <laughs> yeah, so you guys are left with an impressive feat getting through that without combat. She turns around and looks at those. She says, I did ask nicely. Look at that. I don't know about nicely. So, I you mean, guys... I'll be honest, I'm genuinely impressed. I did not take you for the diplomatic sword. Uh -huh. I, I had faith. Um, so, the sled weighs 300 pounds with another 600 pounds of iron ingots on top of it. Um, so, with a four of you together, you could push it. But it will take all four of you to push the um, sled. All right, I'll get from behind. Mm -hmm. Oh, and is that oh, what yeah. we're doing? Um, oh, yeah. yeah. So you guys, if you want to push the sled back, you absolutely can. Okay. Uh, <laughs> That's awesome. Wait, wait. Actually, I want to see how far I can push this on my own. <laughs> What's your strength score? Eighteen. Okay, you can drag, you can push 540 pounds. Yes. Which is not the 900 or whatever this <laughs> is. <laughs> so you see, statics in motion, it's, it, it does not moving. Okay. You know what? That's up, Matt. That's, that's on me. I got a little too into the moment. I need help. It moved like a centimeter. Yeah, no, it's fine. You're doing such a good job, and I'm proud of you. Thank you. I appreciate it. I don't think any of us could even move the centimeter, in all fairness. How did those little spip squeaks move this thing? Well, there were about six of them. That's fair. Seven. Right. If well, hey, look we at can. that. We got the sled back, and we didn't have to kill a yeti, and now we can go home. And you can go home. Okay. I love it. So, you guys... This is just too good to be true. <laughs> real, real quick. Cody, so you said we can go a quarter mile an hour if we're on foot? Yeah. How fast are we going to move pushing a fucking sled? Very slow. Fuck. <laughs> That's, That's all right. Without, without snowshoes. So we're probably going at quarter now since we do have the snowshoes. Perfect. Oh my gosh, this is amazing. Great job, everybody. That's wild. Did not expect that. Um... <laughs> So, you guys head on back to Prince Shandar. Perfect. Um, as you, you push this thing, get up to the gates, um, you get to the end of like the snow, and it's going to be road, and so you can't like go any further. Um, but you're able to uh, head into the city. Um, I'm going to assume one of you goes and gets a stern and brings him back out to the the the, 
the wagon as he comes and he yeah. approaches. He's like, oh, it's the wagon. Oh, this is so good. I'm so happy you have it. This is amazing. Hold up real quick. Do we stop and pick up the, or er, Gurgle was carrying the, the corpse. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, okay. Gurgle All put right. the body on the thing. Okay, okay. so cool, 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 cool. Presumably we have something like over it now, so it isn't just on full display for the town. I was gonna say, if we didn't have anything, we can use my tent. <laughs> It's amazing. Okay. Um, he... Yes, so uh, he's like, he's like, oh, look at all this. He pulls up the, the burlap sack, sees all the, um, the iron ore under there. He's like, oh, look at this amazing iron ore straight from Kelvin's cairn. It's amazing. You brought it all the way back here. I'm so proud of you all. And he like picks up another one, and he picks up another. He like lifts up the like, part of your tent flap, <laughs> just sees like the oh. severed head of his butt. Like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. careful, oh, careful oh, with that. Oh, you brought yeah, you brought sorry. more bun back too. That's 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 great. You, sh- you could have warned me. You could have warned me, but all right. What we could, yes. Did good He's, job. Well, kept uh, in good condition at the very least. Uh, very ex- uh, thank you so much here let me give you um, come back to the shop with me and we'll get you uh, situated and as you guys head back to the shop um, Storn uh, goes and pays you each 50 gold pieces for bringing Ooh. it back yeah. that's, the most, yeah. that's the most lucrative intimidation check I've ever had fuck yeah, oh, yeah. that was great oh, yeah. That was time great. for me to retire guys so I the sound is sleeps <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to go buy your eyeball, Gurgle? Ooh. Oh, yeah. I just don't get it checked by a doctor at all. <laughs> I mean, you have one in your party. I don't trust him. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't trust the son of either. He's just a little weird guy that goes around talking weirdly. Um, amazing. So that was super. That was great, guys. Very impressed uh, with that. With that use of your uh, diplomacy skills, <laughs> somebody roll me a d10. I got wait. I don't know how to just roll. Oh, wait, I do know how to do that now. Yeah, it's at the bottom left. Four. Of a oh four. no! Four rocks fall on us. We all die. <laughs> Um, okay. Hell yeah. So as you... As you're walking through the city, Six Fish... One second here... Um, you notice... A um, a bunch of guards standing around a shop as you guys are walking back to, um, or I'll say you're you're all four of you are leaving the Black Iron Blades. And as you're walking, you see a bunch of guards just surrounding like, uh, it looks like a crime scene of some sort. You said it's by a shop? Yeah, um, it'll be by, just kind of by Kelvin's Comfort down here in the center of town. Six Fish will look over at uh, the kind of like the crowd essentially of guards and just kind of oh there must be a sale going on <laughs> Six Fish I don't believe that that's the occurrence but I could Is be wrong not the case when more so many people are hounding in front of a store well people these are guards are guards not people thing. oh my goodness no oh no guards are, are absolutely not people no <laughs> wow here, they are humanoid, and they are yeah. people, however they are, yeah. right. more hey, so yeah. there to pertain towards... I don't know what that word means. Um, uh, all guards are bastards. Oh. <laughs> Wait, I know that I one. Does that mean none of them one. know their father? <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> hey, more or less. Okay. I actually... Well, not to get into that. What's going on here? The stuns would like start trying to like look over someone's shoulders or like look 
to um, see what might be going on. You see that this is happening in Kelvin's Comfort, which is the most popular inn and tavern in town. Um, it's a dwarven uh, specialty inn where they do a lot of dwarven ales and brandies. You don't um, say. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and there's a bunch of guards just outside. It looks like something has happened. As you look in, you can see what appears to be a body laying on the ground there investigating. Did we um, no. If you'd like to go in and roll some investigation, you can ask around and try to figure out what's happening. I'll leave this to the more investigative folk, but I will relay what I have towards the everyone else. Just in general, that uh, there is a body there. I, I'm, I'm kind of a nosy fellow. I'll, uh, I'll go in there and see what's what. I'm also quite curious. Urgle just stands by the window on the outside. Um, as you head in, you start talking to the. Uh, yeah, roll. What'd you get? You got a. Oh, that's not a four. What, yeah, roll investigation there, uh, Reddish. Uh, so just real Can I quick. I take the help action since I'm going sure. with him. Yay! I don't know how you. So I don't know how you want to do like passive checks, but I have a passive investigation of nineteen. Jesus Christ! Oh my God! Someone, that's... are you observant? Yeah. yeah. That's Yay! Wild. Um, yeah. So I'll say you can go in there and really quickly just start talking to people, kind of figure out what's going on. So the tavern's a buzz with news of recent killings in the town, and apparently one right here at the end. Um, before the murder started happening, you know, most people was questioning about will summer ever return? Will we ever see the sunshine again? But now. Everyone in the tavern is saying, will I be the killer's next victim? Nothing breeds fear and paranoia like a murderer with no face. Uh, is there... I... Yeah, oh, sorry, well, I'll, yeah, I got a little more for you. So you learn that there's been three cold-blooded murders um, that have been happening in the last month. A halfling trapper in East Haven, a human shipbuilder in Targos, and just three days ago, um, or no, just uh, just today, a um, a dwarf was killed here in Bryn Shandar, leaving. Can you the, repeat uh, those? So yeah, there was a, three murders, uh, a halfling in East Haven, the city of East Haven, his halfling trapper who was murdered. There was a human shipbuilder in the city of Targos that was murdered, and just today, a dwarf was killed here in Bryn Shandar. Each victim was found with a stab wound in their uh, heart. Uh, a big, like, just big gaping hole. And, but that's it. No murder weapon has been found. So, hold on. So, a stab wound or a big gaping hole? Because to me, they'll say, they'll say two different things. It's like it was stabbed with something big. The stab right, was something okay. that left a hole. Oh god! <laughs> like a like a hollow kind of a yeah. Gotcha. Um, and the the drunken lot in the tavern, you know, that everyone's talking about. It, nobody really knows, um, but somebody, an elderly shield dwarf with a nasty scar across her nose, um, she's like watching you, Reddish, as you're kind of talking to people, and she's smoking a big pipe and just kind of eyeing you ever since you started asking about this is she eyeing me like with any sort of malice or is it like curiosity uh roll insight and get a 10 that'll do it yeah you uh you think she some, something's up she's very curious very very curious it seems hmm uh, and you said she's inside the actual, was that Kelvin's comfort? Yeah, she's at the end. And I'll say all four of you there, are, like, just looking around and kind of seeing all the, the commotion. Okay. Uh, I want to s- stroll over to her, uh, as confidently as can be. <laughs> and, well, good morning. Uh, hello. You seem like an inquisitive sort. Right, you seem like the real curious sort. Well, maybe. Well, My name is Hale. You are. Nice to meet you. 
and I'll, I'll extend my hand in courtesy. It's nice to meet you, Hilda. My name is Red. Um, you know about anything that's going on here? Ah, uh, yes. I've been... <sighs> I have been used to be in a bit of an investigator myself, but I've uh, been a bit out of work, done some retirement, and so I've been uh, in my off time investigating these murders, because no one else seems to even be bothered about them. I'll kind of like nod, and as she's talking, I'm going to reach over and just take the pipe out of her hand and, and take a hit for myself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh... Roll a persuasion check, I guess. Or intimidation, <laughs> whatever you want that to be. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought we were being friends. Um, it's not Tug Tug Pass right now. <laughs> oh, gotcha. Well, it's, it's a plus zero in both, so. Okay. She's. Normally, she'd be a little offended, but, you know, you're so um, bold that she's impressed. Oh, well. <laughs> I, I, and uh, yes, please help yourself, I guess. <laughs> yeah, um, right. Are these your friends? She points to the rest of the crew. Uh, I'll kind of look back at me. Friends is definitely a word that some people use. I so, see. you have uh, an interest in what's going on here? Well, I've been trying to investigate it, but I'm old and I'm not the best of the blade anymore, so I thought I would just tell you what I know, and hopefully you, group of ventures, can solve this yourselves, because I'm... Ah, it's just too cold and I'm too old to be dealing with this. I think I know what's happening, though. There okay. is a man named Sephic Caltro. He works for a small traveling company called Torgs. They're operated by a shady dwarf named Torga Icevane. And Sephic gets around. He's charming. He makes friends easily. And he's Torga's bodyguard. And I'm assuming he's good with the blade. Right. His victims... He, he, oh, yes. Go ahead. And... and that's a pretty harsh accusation to just be thrown around. What makes you think that this individual is involved? Well, they are a traveling merchant company, and the company travels town to town selling their wares, and they have followed the exact path of these murders. Okay. Also, his victims come from the only three towns that sacrifice humans to this Frost Maiden. Oh, you... Seems like you didn't know about the human sacrifices. Uh, you know, it wasn't exactly surprisingly front page news. Well, it doesn't happen it's in Bryn Shandar, thankfully. It's too civilized here. But some of the other towns have resorted to uh, quite uh, distasteful means to um, appease the Frost Maiden and bring back the summer. But Wrong. my nope. thought is that maybe some of the victims found a way to keep their names out of the drawing pool. Hmm. And maybe, just maybe, Sephic is doing the Frost Maiden's work. Right, you keep saying that name, Frost Maiden. You want to, uh, right, talk to me like I'm five. Who's that? She looks at you like just a complete idiot. And she's like, you, mean, you don't mean Aril, the goddess of winter, who has cursed our lands with never-ending darkness? Right. Oh, yep, yeah, that's one. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Well, I followed the merchant company for a ten days and moved from town to town. And quite, it's quite a devious little enterprise. And I watched Sephic. And what struck me about him is how comfortable he was in the weather. No coat, no scarf, no gloves. See him walking, standing around in the brutal wind, and it's like it didn't even bother him. Listen, if you are able to apprehend Sephic and ascertain his guilt and deal with him, with preferably without involving the authorities, I will pay you a hundred gold. Ooh. I mean, that's a pretty... That's a pretty hefty payday. Just out of curiosity, I understand you said you would do this yourself, but why is it that you're so interested that you're willing to pay for it? I mean, I just like to do, I like to, uh, do good. 
I was an right, investigator so for a very long time. Okay. Is it like community service kind of thing? Uh, something like that, yes. Right. Okay. And we're there, right? Yeah, you're all there, so you can yeah, jump in the conversation okay. if you want to. So, so after all that, Sixish will just kind of... So, <clears throat> we're we're after Sethic, but you said he, he protects uh, Torga? Yes, Torga is his employer. I do not know if Torga is involved or not in this uh, these murders. Hmm. But it is only prudent that we take Sethic into... Well, I, I, this is just a theory. You need to ascertain his guilt. To make sure that he is actually the killer first. And if you can, right. then take care of him. Fuck yeah. What do you guys think? Sounds like something we can do? I'm so ready, ready for him. Um... Let's go. Well, that's, this is fantastic. Good luck. Uh, the only problem is it's a traveling caravan and they are not in Bryn Shandar right now. Do you, Do you know, know their location? I actually don't. Oh. Well, that's great. Oh, uh, well. Do we look at a map? I'm sure whatever the nearest town is is probably their next location. Yeah, um, you can um, ask around and try to investigate and see if anybody knows maybe where they went next. Do you know who they were, I don't know, dealing with when they were in town? Oh, yes, they had a little shop right in the marketplace, right in the center of town, right by that little, um, that little gnome with all the glass and the little, you know, the little lenses. It's shut oh, right Gurgle's there. been going over there a little bit. Oh, interesting. I oh, see, yes. I know where it is. Uh, it, it were here about uh, three days ago, I believe, last. Or no, actually, I'm sorry. They left uh, this morning. It's conveniently right before, right after the body was found. That is pretty suspicious. Yes, indeed. I didn't do it. Oh, <laughs> Well, that's that's probably good. more suspicious. It's good to know, I guess. <laughs> Anyways. Oh. Uh, yes, let me know if you have any other questions, but uh, good luck and be careful. I believe Sephic is exper an expert with the blade. Mm. Well, I'm sure Sephic has never scared away ten goblins in one fell swoop. <laughs> ten goblins? I think there was eleven. I don't know. Look like three Yes, to you're me. right. Actually, you know what? I think there might have been 15. There's probably a dragon sounds... there, too. <clears throat> yeah, right. Yeah, no, the it's dragon. It's definitely a dragon you're scared of. I don't know oh. how, we for, how we forgot about the dragon. Listen, with that every show, story like, is better with just be like, dragon. Yes, it's true. Brother. I scared away a dragon. Nobody should fear when I am around. Oh, my gosh. That's awesome. Um... You also find some information as you're kind of as uh, um, asking around people. You learn something. You learn um, that there is a um, in Care Koenig, the town of Care Koenig. You hear that local establishments are beset by vandals and thieves that skulk around unseen. Nobody can knows where, like, what's happening, but, like, things are just going missing and nobody knows what's going on. Um, and you hear that the town speaker, who is a dragonborn named Trovis, has asked for some help catching the interlopers. Well, I mean, if we're in the area, that sounds like a good idea, but I think a murder spree is probably a bit more pertinent. Absolutely, yeah, that's fair, that's fair. I'm saying this to the group. Right, yes, if, I mean, if we need supplies, maybe it would be a good place to stop. Absolutely. 
Ah, I found it. All right, there you can see the map now. So this is the town of, this is Icewind Dale. You are here. If I could stop scrolling, sorry. I hate it. Unfortunately, we live here currently. And you can see the town, so you're in, oh, stop that. You are in, you are in Bryn Shandar, the biggest town there. Ker Dinaval is up here to uh, the north uh, e or northwest or sorry northeast um, and you're not really sure where uh, your uh, murder suspect has gone to. He could have gone to any of the towns around here. There's Targos, Tourmaline, East Haven, Goodmead. You're not Real sure. quick, Cody, are you showing us this map in Albert Radio? Rodeo? Uh, oh, in his in Twitch channel. Oh, fuck, I gotta open a Twitch? Yes. Here, let me, uh, <laughs> I'll put on the Albert too. Alright. Uh, okay, I see you. So, yeah, what's the game plan? Well, it oh, sounds like we need to talk to that gnome. Yeah. Oh. Oh, good call. Try to get some info on if they know what direction maybe they went in. Uncle, maybe he'd be more willing to talk to you. I understand that merchants like those who buy from them. Been waiting for it for me. Never mind. That's pretty fucking small. You guys can absolutely head back to the marketplace. Um, here's what we're gonna do. Let's take we've been going for an hour and a half, so let's take a little six minute break. So we can get a little uh, bio, get some water, get some coffee, and we'll come back and we will figure out what to do with this murder. Thanks, everybody, for sticking with. We'll be put the timer up for about seven minutes, I think, and we'll be back. So take a little break. See you guys soon. Okay.
Speak and he is summoned. <laughs> I'm so, dude, I'm sorry, man. I had to piss for like the last. Yeah, I was holding that piss for like 40 minutes. I can actually think straight now. <laughs> I, I did. You got twice. I, I saw I the saw desperation that. in the second message. I was like, oh no. <laughs> That's fine. I love you, buddy. Aw. No. Sound like a donkey, Jesus. <laughs> right. Yes. Yep. So, Gargo, where was this shop that you said you bought this from? She's like oh, pointing it's... to the new eye. By the way, it looks great. <laughs> oh, this this isn't the new eye. I just oh, took shoot. it from the body. Oh, <laughs> well, I mean, it's recyclable, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I put the eye in, but it's kind of like cocked off to the side. Hmm. You might want somebody Bro. to help you with that. Uh, now, where did you find it? Oh, that's what I always <laughs> say. Hmm. Gargoyle, I must say, while Hello. I may not know you long, and it probably will not be long with that pus there, but. It is a good time to see you, you know. So where did you buy that eye? Uh, you know, that body we picked up? Um, mm. I took it from there. Right. I forgot. Sorry. Anyways, the gnome that you were talking to, where is he? Oh, oh, he's, he's, uh, he's right over here somewhere. Right. Point around looking at the buildings I don't really recognize anymore. She's gonna lean back over to like Dishonest and Reddish and be like Now That's the, the memory? Is that the thing? I have no idea I'm sorry, what? The, the memory, like you worked with him Is that the thing? Anyways No, right, he's a memory good kid he's, uh, he's trying his best So there are issues? Has he seen a doctor? I mean, no, Thomas, he it, it, is, it is completely <laughs> obvious to you that he has not seen any medical care, probably ever. What's a doctor? <laughs> oh no. We might want to get that checked out. Yeah, Dasanas, yeah. you instantly see like his eyes all messed up. Like he's got like <laughs> He put he put a frozen rotten eyeball inside of his eye. <laughs> Let's Just those questions on whether or not he should like take it out himself or like tell him but he thinks that he's gonna just do more injury so goes, sit perfectly still for me for a moment you make me make bleed sure. i'll make, make sure you, you get bleed. consent <laughs> not the weirdest thread i've received funnily enough and the stunt was like slowly reach forth and like try to like remove it do you allow this to happen your goal I allow it. I'm just not happy about it. <laughs> He's just like growling the roll, whole time. Roll medicine then, Destinus. Let's see how you well you extract this uh, rotten eyeball. <laughs> hey, you expertly like pluck well that done. thing out. Um, hey, that was mine. <laughs> <laughs> um, it yeah. wasn't yours to begin with, and then he'll like slowly just take it back. Finders keepers. Wait, hold on. Why do you get to take it? Why, why do you have more I, right to it I'm than not, he does? I'm not keeping it. You're just gonna put it in your fucking pocket? No, I'm gonna return it to the dead body and the individuals who have all rights to it. I'm just—I mean, I don't think he was complaining. Yeah, he doesn't need it. So you're just gonna bring it back to the black iron blades. 
I'm gonna like have it wrapped in a handkerchief and then I'm gonna take it back to the Black Iron Blades while they're going to go ask questions and stuff. Amazing. <laughs> it's just the... Somebody took it, sorry. Are you gonna do medicine to, to Google's eyes? Is anyone gonna help his eye? <laughs> yeah, I'll do it before I leave. Like, just try uh -huh. to like pat it the sides, make sure that... Whatever infection there might be, because this dentist doesn't think that there's no infection. Oh, no, no, it's, there it's might all be, fucked up. Yeah, so it's helped. Yeah. So I guess yeah, you you get in there, you apply some salve, like um, you 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 clean it up as best you can, apply a bandage. So gurgles, uh, doing a little better. A little. <laughs> and you guys head on down to the marketplace, and girl leads you to the little gnome, and he's sitting there in his little booth. He's got his big gloves on. He's got like a little. Heat the fire to go next to him, keep him warm because it's all cold. He's the breath coming out of his mouth. He's just grinding his glass. No, oh, you're back. Did you get my gold? For the eyeball? Yeah. I got oh. some gold. Uh, do you want to buy it right now? Oh, absolutely. Should have sold what I had in my eye before. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Let me go ahead and get that thing plucked in there. Please. Oh, you want the purple one, right? Yeah. All right. Um, that'll be 50 gold. I reach into my pocket full of gold and I hand you 50. Well, awesome. I don't got much left. Oh, this is great. Um, yeah, you you wanted the violet one, right? The purple guy? Here you go. Yeah. Um, he. Do you need some help uh, installing it? Yeah, sure. I don't know what I'm doing here. Uh, here, open up real wide. And he, like, he cleans <laughs> it off some solvent and pops it right in. And you have a beautiful purple. What's your other eye color? Green. Uh, so one green eye and one purple eye. Also, the the green one is like a, has like the slit in it, and the purple one's like mm -hmm. totally human, like normal around. <laughs> um, awesome. So you get your eye. What else? You, um, he's like, oh, is there anything else I can help you with? Uh, I've been hearing there's been murders. You know anything? Oh yes, the whole town's on edge. Oh, Dale is actually up here in different murders in different towns. People don't really, you know, it's a dangerous place. We got uh, barbarians and yetis and bears, but, you know, murder, there's not that often around here. Yeah. Sounds about fun. Well, what else what can I sell you? Oh, I don't really need anything else. I just. No, come buy any information right. well, and take email. care. Oh, Actually, what? sir, um, you know any what? information? There, know well, there was a uh, vendor that was near you. Um, what was the name? Torag. Oh, yeah, that that they were awful. I didn't oh. like that place at all. They were uh, Do they were selling all kinds of stuff. I swear, some of their stuff was stolen. They just seem really? shifty-eyed. As if taken from the dead. Mm. Mm, maybe, <laughs> I don't know. But they were selling, like, all kinds of weird trinkets and things, and uh, they just had, it just looked like it was either, like, stolen stuff, or, like, you know, maybe it would, like, break hey. on you. I just didn't trust any of those types. Mm. Well, I guess you did not talk to them much, it sounds like. I mean, I talked to them a little bit. That uh, They had a, a guard guy, some, you know, he had, like, a... A sword. He kept. He came over and talked to me a little bit. Hmm. Uh, that. Oh, that's on the tip of my tongue. I heard that it was on the on the road. You know, Sethic. Oh, I, that might have been. That might have been his name. I'm not really sure. Okay. What? That's great. So, what did you say he was doing? Oh, there was. He just said he was out trading and looking for things to buy. But I just got a bad vibe from all of them. And I just didn't like how they treated their customers, to be honest. I could overhear mm. their dealings, and I just, I felt they were fleecing people. Well, sheep should definitely be wary then. But, <laughs> with that, I don't know, suppose that you uh, heard where they might be going. It sounds like if everyone da around here was getting uh, tired of their stuff, then like, I don't know, maybe they're with somewhere else? Yeah, I know they're traveling around, let me think. I think they were heading to Targos, I think. 
Really? Wait. Wasn't there a murder there not just long ago? Oh, wait. I'm sorry. No, they said they were stopping the Targos, but they're. I think they were heading originally to Bremen. Oh, I see. Yeah, which is which is on the way, but yeah, Bremen, I think, is their ne it was their Targos and Bremen. I see, I see. Well, I must say, your pieces here are very beautiful, and I'm sure the gargle here will appreciate your eye. Um, we should not take up more of your time, no? Oh, I, no, yeah. No. Um, if you need more glass or some eyeglasses, let me know. Of I'm course. hoping I don't lose another eye. And what did you say your name was? Oh, my name is uh, Devin. Hi, Devin. I am Six Fish. It is wonderful to meet you. Oh, and t t take care, Toodles. And you guys head off with your new Toodles. information. Hell yeah, information. Yeah. Okay, sounds like we got to go to Bremen. Which, I guess that means that uh, the other Dragonborn will have to wait. I'm thinking, look, it sounds like we've got a bit of a road trip ahead of us. As much fun as it is walking through the fucking blizzard, maybe we could look into picking up a dog sled. Yes, that would that be would very help. helpful. You know how much one of those costs? I have no idea. Well, uh, you know, maybe if we're going to travel together, we all can all pitch in. Maybe our 50 gold reward would be enough to cover that, no? I already spent mine. That's okay, it looks great. I'm Perfect. sure 150 should be able to cover a wagon and some dogs. That's quite a bit of gold, I could, I think. That's, it's no small amount. So, can we look around uh, DM and see if we can't find a, uh, a, a used um, sled salesman? Absolutely. So, <laughs> we're not getting a new one. That's the... yeah, no, we're not new sled people. We're buying that shit on retail. <laughs> They're a sled Craigslist. Uh, yeah, you actually head <laughs> down to Craig? the stables um, in the <laughs> southwest part of the town. Um, as you get there, you see a whole bunch of different um, animals in these barns held not a ton of horses really but a lot of dogs and a lot of and actually um, a lot of axe beaks too um, if axe you don't know beaks. what that is I fucking love that sorry is it by any chance of axe beaks they also have axe beaks that run across the snow with their big feet I want I don't those. Want to act, I don't want to axe. I want that. Let's not get out and hand I want you. a personal one to ride. I need one. This thing is disgusting. Yeah. I so, need it. <laughs> as you get down there, you uh, see a um, a half elf druid who looks like he's kind of running the show around here, and he sees you approach. He's like, "Oh, uh, hello, welcome to uh, this." in Shandar stables. Are you looking for transport or or a pack animal? So, my if my friends and I here, we've decided to go on a bit of a tour of the Ten Towns. Uh, we're looking to, to get where we need to go, you know, frugally. Oh, absolutely. Uh, we know, it doesn't seem like many people have much gold in this type of economy. Um, are you interested in, um, you're looking for like a dog sled, I'm assuming? Uh, a dog sled is kind of what we're leaning towards, although my, uh, my feline friend here does seem to have an interest in some axe beaks. He's like staring at one, like. Let's see. Can well, she it... touch it? Can she touch it? Oh, um, not that one. It's quite mean. This one over here, though, this is Gertrude. She's a little bit sweeter. She'll let you pet her. Mm, I don't know. An animal with a fighting spirit might be a, a worthy companion. <laughs> um, if you want to pet the, the scary one, you can roll animal handling. I want to pet the scary one. <laughs> Get a 15 or above. Just so you know, I am not trained in animal handling. So this is about to be a fate roll. 
Damn. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. It does not <laughs> like you, you know. and uh, oh. as you kind of get up to it and reach, you know, you're trying to pet it, it just it just bites your hand and um, doesn't do any damage, but uh, you you definitely flinch and jerk away. Oh, you jerk! <laughs> I can do this. I think she hisses like, at it. <laughs> Well, he's like, well, we have quite a few uh, options for you. Uh, so a dog sled, uh, an empty sled, costs uh, 20 gold. Uh, mm-hmm. Weighs 300 pounds. And has a room at the back for one driver. Oh, shit. We got something a little bigger. There's four uh, of us. Oh, no, I'm sorry. It can... Um, it, it pulls 300 pounds, so you can you can put some people on it if you like, up to 300 pounds of, of people. I kind of eyeball six fish. <laughs> Bro, I'm not so sure that's going to do it. Yes, you She's going to give you a look like, excuse you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you might, you might need two dog sluts for your team. Muscle, muscle weighs more than fat. Two dogs, uh, you can also purchase an, an axe beak if you'd like. These um, amazing birds cost 50 gold each. Oh. How how incredibly convenient! <laughs> we can get two axe beaks and two sleds. Assuming an axe beak can pull a sled by itself. Um, the the dog sleds come with a dog, so they come with um, um dogs that pull it. Gotcha. Okay. Uh... Real quick, sorry, I'm reading one of my spells. Let's see. I think chat wants us to buy the uh, the bitey ones, so I think we're gonna buy go. the bitey <laughs> ones. I'll take the mean one. Nipsey the Ag Speak, I freaking love that. So it seems that we're guaranteed going to be buying at least a Ag Speak. Yes, and I want this bitey one. I'm gonna make it my mount. <laughs> I feel like me and you. You her actually want to buy first, Nipsey, but... though. It's, it just bit you. Yes, I, I I think that he has a good, good uh. Brave, good brave woman. Spirit. All right. Uh, yes, you can you can purchase Nipsey. I would be not sad to see him go. He's bitten me many times. Well, uh, uh, you know what? That's his. That is a, a shame. Uh, maybe then uh, he should come with some extra stuff. Extra, mm. I mean. Like some fish? <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> I, hmm? I can give you a, a discount, possibly. Oh, now that would be very lovely. They roll persuasion and get over okay. 13. Okay. So, being somebody who pedals his um, wares regularly, can I help her? Actually, well, that I would appreciate the help. Can I respond real quick to twist this to an intimidation? Yeah, sure. <laughs> I don't know when how you're going to do it. But yeah. Okay. So, so yes, oh, a discount would be great. After all, you wouldn't want your reputation to be ruined by a poor animal sold from your service. I, I, no, I, I would not. No. He's a little dumbstruck, doesn't know what to say. Yeah, absolutely. Roll it. That's amazing. 21. Oh, hell yeah. Uh, yes, please. Uh, 10, 10 gold off the top. 40 gold. You can take it. Sure, sure. 35 gold, of course. <laughs> Sounds like a deal. He looks at the scary tabaxi. He's like, fine. 35 gold. Mm, here you go. And she'll bear Stannis all of her teeth as she drops the side of the coin. <laughs> Stannis just slowly shakes his head at the back and I'm like, I do not agree with this. Anyway, so you wanted to buy a sled? Oh, uh, yeah, so here's, he, yeah, he gives you Nipsey's, uh, you see six fish grab Nipsey's, like, um, reins and try to take You're it. Nipsey's just fighting, just hates every part of this. <laughs> They're over there. Those two are over there having a moment. What's Reddish, Gurgle, and Distanis gonna do? I wanna... F- Bro, how much oh. weight can one of these things carry? 
Oh, an axe beak? It pulls as much as a mule. Ah, uh, yes, yeah. let me use my yeah. let me use my memory of how much a mule pulls. That's Thank like you. a thousand pounds. Um it has a it's a quite strong. Um should yeah, be able to a mule. More, much more than a than a uh, dog sled can. Okay. So uh, I can uh, stop about 500 pounds, I'll say. Does anyone want to go half seas? Sure, I've got a few coins left. left. Well, I'm just saying, like, I don't, I mean, I don't want to drop 50 gold for a fucking bird that's probably going to, you know, uh, you fucking eat me. I got an uh -huh. idea for a discount. Don't worry, I already bought that one. Um. Good. This dummy's pays 20 gold for a sled and dogs, and then we'll just slightly l leave the premises so that he isn't involved in the potential uh, illeg illegalities that might occur after what he's just heard. <laughs> so let me remove the 20 her. gold. Did you say you want to do something, Gurgle? I have a... I want to see if... I can get him to give a discount if he has seen anything more disgusting than his eye. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, you can. How are you gonna ask that? Go for he it. He just but walks up and gives him the stank know, eye. He just that. like just... walks up and just opens the eye. No, just take the eye out and be like, uh -huh. "You're gonna give uh -huh. me a discount." Uh -huh. Uh -huh. What? He stared into the face why, of death. Why are you taking your eye out of me, sir? Oh, God. I want a discount. I... <laughs> now. He's disabled. <laughs> I, I need intimidation, I guess. Get a 13 or above. <laughs> intimidation. I tell you what. You're, you're, you already succeeded your uh, intimidation check against Six Fish because she's just like, oh my gosh. <laughs> Uh, he's like, I just fine, fine. Just please get your eyeball away from me. I'll give you ten gold off. Put my eye back in. Dear Lord, that'll do. That then, it worked. Uh, well then, I guess. So wait, what do you want to do then, Mister uh, uh, Mister Dragonborn? Uh, uh, I just want to see what kind of discount you give. Oh, well, ten gold is all I can do. Well, I only got 15. Oh. Do I have to take my eye out again? <laughs> no, I, I can. Listen, no, no, no please. Here, here. I can... uh, let me make up the the rest. I'll give him the rest. It's like, uh, I can give you a dog sled for 15 gold. I don't know. Throw in an extra dog and you got a deal. Uh, yes, our finest two dog sled. Just please don't eat the dogs. Oh. No promises. Oh my god. The Stannis and Reddish, what are you doing? Right, okay, oh, so let's... I wasn't joking. The Stannis fully just left the building. He's like outside, like <laughs> petting fine, the dogs that like he has. Just like, <laughs> yeah, I'm glad I'm not in there right now. <laughs> <laughs> he feels the energies coming out of the building like. They're doing something <laughs> wrong. Ah, uh, so Reddish will look at the stable master. So I understand you've got like the best of the best out here. That's not exactly what I need. I'm looking for an axe beak that just kind of needs a good home. Oh, you want like, like, like an old one or one that's like a little <laughs> lost some feathers yeah, maybe? <laughs> Yeah, you know, one that just needs a little bit of like some TLC and you know, you wouldn't you necessarily got any sell clearance. It. Yeah. Well, uh, I mean, Gertrude over here, the one we I showed you before, she's a bit older. She's uh still got some kick in her, but um, you know, she's a little uh She's definitely got some mange and some, you know, her mm. eyes get a little weepy and they got to clean out the crust every morning. But if you're okay with that, then. Hey, look, it's Gosh. another gurgle. Right. <laughs> she's, she's perfect. Uh, yeah, so, we can let Gertrude go for 40 gold. 30 gold sounds perfect. Uh, listen, listen, you're all, you can't, I can't give you all discounts. I'll lose my job. Well, I understand it. Look, here's the thing. 
I'll be honest with you. Money's a bit tight. Right? Now, I assume that this axe beak is going to have to fucking eat. Well, yes. And I would like to be... I would like to leave here with money to buy the proper amount of food. We've got a job coming up. It's a pretty big payday. So I'll tell you what. You sell it to me now for 20. I'll come back in a week. I'll give you another 30. Uh, roll persuasion, 13. Uh, Big Fish is like taking notes of this. Uh, persuasion, there he goes. Fuck all. Listen, he's like, listen, I, I can't lose my job. I've given th two of you discounts already. Nope, you know, that's fair. I understand. The man's got to make I, his And living. I'm already giving you a discount. 40 gold is quite a discount. Just take your eye out. Right. 10 whole gold so, off. Okay. No, I just feel kind oh. of bad. Okay. I will give the man 40 gold begrudgingly. Oh, thank you, sir. <laughs> thank you, sir. He gives you Gertrude's reins and gives her a little, like, you know, pet. Um, as the elderly uh, axe beak <laughs> takes off the reddish. <laughs> um, Dastanis, you see your friends all leave with their cool axe beaks. Or well, I guess uh, two of them do. Your girl's out there um, with nothing. <laughs> what do the two of you do? Uh, real quick, Six Fish is, is going to... I feel guilty now. Six Fish is going to drop like a, another 10 gold like and pretend like she doesn't notice. Just drop it on the ground? Like on like a desk or something. Oh. <laughs> oh, what was that? Oh well. Yeah. Oh, uh, well, mm, I thought I heard something. Maybe not. Okay, bye. Oh. The poor stable boy just got harassed by four grown adventures. <laughs> Three. Hold Three. On, like, yeah. I, I didn't do anything. Three. What are you gonna do so about bad. your uh, about transportation, Distanus? Yeah. Uh, I guess the question is, is can Axe Beaks have two riders? I was, ride buying a dog. Dog I was buying a dog sled. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, I paid the 20 gold. Oh, okay. You got 20 gold for the dog sled. Perfect. Yeah. He just did it transactionally. Sure. Yeah, I just gave him 20 gold. I was like, all right, thank you. And then I walked out. I didn't threaten him. That's fair. Gurgle yeah. Noise, what did you do? Or what do you want to do for I, transport I, airport? I bought the, the dog sled. Okay. So he sold you a dog. So you got two dog sleds and two axe beaks. That's actually pretty badass. <laughs> uh, hell yeah, that's awesome. Super cool. So you guys and your super cool axe beaks and your super awesome <laughs> fast dog sleds with your loving puppies <laughs> are able to leave. Um, is there anything else you want to do in Bryn Shandar before you leave? Uh, just real quick, so you're tracking, Cody. I'm gonna buy a set of hide armor real quick. That's fair. Yeah, Let's it'll see. be whatever is in the player's handbook for price. Uh, yeah, ten, How... ten gold. Hmm. Yeah. How far is it to the next town? Or how far. many like days worth of trek? So I know how many rations I should have, or should buy. Let's see here. Uh I believe I have a little guide that tells me this. Oh my goodness. You know, um, yes. I can't help but notice that none of you have claws. Uh, I know that a lot of the terrain out there might get a little, uh, up and Clive? down. Yeah, um, perhaps a climber's kit might serve us well. What are you talking about? I got claws. So I show you. Do you have a climb yes, speed? Yes, but though? you do not have claws like these, and she'll bear like oh. her weapon claws. Freaking cl a claw off! I like AKA this. AKA Tabaxi has climb climb speed, but I don't know if anybody else has climb speed. And I, I feel know. like in this campaign we might climb, maybe. Scale the mountain. Look, well, that's wrong. what we have Nipsey for. Nipsey, the uh, the mountain scaler, obviously. Yeah. Look, listen, sweetheart, if we gotta climb a mountain, I quit, so... <laughs> Fuck That's it. fair no. enough. I'll buy a climber's kit just in case. This Donald's will take her suggestion. And that is... Fuck, how much is this shit again? 25? It's like 25 gold. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Couldn't do it if I wanted to. Huh. 
Right. Um, I want to buy a healer's kit. Nice. You can definitely do that. Okay, and that's the rest of my gold. Um, I thought I had... Oh, actually, uh, I still have a little bit of money left. Can I buy, like, I don't know, like, spicy rum or something? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Heck yeah. I'm gonna buy, like, That's a great. barrel of it. A barrel? Yeah, like a small barrel. A like small a little barrel, keg. Sure. Yeah, like a little keg. Would that be like a trade good? I have no idea. I've never done that before. That was. Hmm. Ah, here we go. See. I found it. So to go from oh, cool. Bremen to. Or no, Bryn Shandar to Bremen would be. Uh, it would take four and a half hours to get there by. Uh, Slide. Five hours. Good. Yeah, it should be good then. Oh, just wanted to make sure about rations and shit. Sounds good then. All right, I love it. Some quality content right here. And I will, quality before content. we leave, saying uh, six fish get one. I will also get a healer's kit. Nice. Yay. Love it. Love it. Um, we'll also see you guys take a nap in there too. It's kind of weird because it's always nighttime now. So um, basically how it works here in Icewind Dale is um, when it's night, it's like really dark. And then when it's daytime, it's just kind of dark. <laughs> so it's like, <laughs> you know, uh, so it doesn't really matter when you sleep. There's no like waiting for morning. You just kind of go. So you guys will just take, uh, I'll, say, I'll say you all um, rest before you take off. And when you're all rested and ready to go, you meet up in the south and the um, I'm ready to leave. Anything else you guys want to do before you take off? Uh, I'm about to buy a little bit of random equipment. Love it. I got uh, picked up, picked up some chain, a tent, a bedroll. Nice. Just random shit. Love it. No pittance. What's going on? No pittens? Come on up. The hell do I need pittens for? I ain't climbing no damn mountain. If you have to climb a, a mountain, you leave, remember? <laughs> yeah, fuck that. Y'all have fun. Um, What's the chain for? Why? What a silly question. What's the rope for? <laughs> All right, so you guys leave Bryn Shandar and head towards Bremen. Now, the road to Bremen runs by Targos, and about halfway to the journey, um, running along the... Um, actually, everyone, roll animal handling before we Yay. take off. Oh, well, that's not bad. Ooh, 14. Ooh. Nice. Yeah, you all seem to be getting along a lot better with your animals. Specifically Listen, six Nipsey, fish. we're going to be on a long road together. You best just... Nipsey and Gertrude are getting along, and you're all having a blast as um, it just runs across the snow, feeling the wind as the as the as you just see the landscape zooming past you, and eventually, you come upon the town of Targos. Now, Targos um, has a wall. It's on a... I guess the question is, do you want to stop at Targos or keep going? I think we just keep going to Brennan, right? I'd say the, yeah. I think the only interest we would have in Targos is one of the murders happened there. We might be able to collect more information, but... Love it. If you guys feel like, if you guys feel like that might be fruitless, we can just press on. Well, that murder was pretty recent. I think it might be worth to ask someone. Is there anything in it for us? Maybe a better idea of what uh, we're hunting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess it wouldn't hurt asking to see if maybe they have or haven't gone through here either, too. That could be. That's about all I can imagine, though. <clears throat> yeah, absolutely. So uh, you guys debate about it as you approach, but decide to pop in for at least a little bit. 
Targos is encircled by a giant, by a big wooden wall, keeping out um, threats from the wilderness. It also, ex the wall extends out onto the lake, creating a safe harbor for the town's boats. But unfortunately, the long winter has frozen the water, and all the boats are trapped on the ice. Um, as you approach, you see there's fishermen that have to drag their boats, like, a half mile from the marina to the open water where the ice like isn't frozen to get to the lake to fish and then when they're done they have to like, drag the boats back it looks awful um it's about a thousand people live here so it's one of the larger cities and um there's a couple taverns and inns and things like that is there anything you guys want to do or ask around here I think probably a, th a thousand people is big for this area. Holy fuck. Um, yeah, it's huge. <laughs> this is all I'm, tiny little towns. Uh, I would say we could probably find wherever like the local pub would be, like whether it be a tavern, pub, whatever the case may be. That might, that might probably be the best place to start. Sure. Um, as you go through the town, you're heading towards the... Um, you're heading towards the, uh, to the, uh, um, in there. And you all of a sudden, as you're trudging through the snow, snow crunching underneath your feet, you hear the bark of a dog over the whistle of the wind. It doesn't sound like one of your dogs. Um, but all of a sudden you see a wolf sized dog with light gray fur running towards you, dragging a broken harness behind it. Um. Everyone, roll animal handling that is again. That's unusual. I'm sorry, you said roll what, Cody? Uh, animal handling once more. Sixteen. Ooh. Four. Uh, Gurgle noise. You uh, hear amazing. this bark, and um, turn turn to see this giant beast jump on you um, its teeth growling as it knocks you onto your back and you see this big wolf looking right down at you in the eyes and you see it about to like come down and bite your face before it just starts licking you <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah knocks you to the ground and starts licking your face oh my god what a friendly beast Wow, how cute, she says, as she puts her hammer back into its sheath. <laughs> <laughs> um, it gets off and it starts, like, barking at you and, like, like trying to get you to follow it. It's doing the whole lassie thing. I think it wants something. I think it just wants to its reaction. <laughs> I don't know. It just sounds like a lot of noise to me, silly dog. It shows thing up. I don't quite think that that's the right course of action. Mm. Why don't we simply follow it for now? See where it may uh, lead. It has a broken harness. Woof. It might have belonged to oh. someone. Wait, do you do you all make a habit out of just following strays? Well, it has a broken harness, so presumably something broken. Rob, don't we already have shit to do? Am I gonna have to carry another body? <laughs> <laughs> Potentially. The more money we have, the less we need to threaten innocent shopkeepers. Well, hmm. maybe it's something nearby. I suppose we should check to see. There's no one. All right. Um, but the dog seems happy and it's woof woof, but it tries to get you to follow it. Um, it leads you a block down the road to um, a small house. And it runs up to the door and starts barking at the door. Um, before you can really get up there to knock or anything, a handsome man in his 30s opens the door and the dog races inside. And the man looks down and is like, hey, boy, it's so good to see you. And like he looks really happy to see the dog. And then he looks up and sees you. And this look of kind of confusion comes across his face. The same look of confusion is on Six Fish's face. <laughs> Oh, um, hello. Uh, who, who are all you? Who Apparently you ones who found your dog, yes. Oh, you f you found Boy. Oh, that's... Oh, I, well, he's he's actually not my dog. He's my husband's dog, actually. Um, oh. 
It's well, a weird uh, thing to draw a line of you, the devil possession on. You don't. You haven't mm. met. You haven't seen uh, <laughs> Garrett, have you? No. Who? No idea. I don't know who that oh. is. I'm sorry. Oh, please come inside out of the cold. Let me get you some cider. Okay. Bro, is is no one going to address the fact? It's all right. We have. You did say cider, too. and that actually sounds pretty good. Six Bro, fish. It's... Is no one going to talk about the fact that the dog's name is Boy? (laughs) Boy, am Mm. I hungry, that's for sure. Okay. Listen, yes, his name is Silly. My husband, Garrett, named him. uh, What if your husband's name was Husband? That (laughs) would be very silly. Uh, Come in, come in. He closes the door and pours you all a cup of warm cider and sits you down next to his fireplace. Uh, I... Hello, yes, my... um, my name is um, is uh, Keegan, um, and uh, thank you for coming to my house. I was actually born here in Ten Towns, but my husband comes from a, fam- a wealthy family in oh, Winter. Hey, they're stuck on the Google screen on your stream. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, the... Sorry, I just completely... No, no, no. This is good. This is good. <laughs> I wanted to fix that, too. I didn't realize. So, a few days ago, my husband was hired by some adventurers to lead them up the slopes of Kelvin's Cairn. Um, he was planning to take them to Cair Koenig, um, the town at the foot of Kelvin's Cairn, and then acquire some climbing gear from the outfitter and bring them to the top of the mountain. Uh, Garrett took six dogs with him. A uh, boy here was Garrett's favorite, raised him from a pup, and he would never leave Garrett's side unless something terrible had happened. Um, it's a lot to ask, but could I persuade you all to go and, and find my husband? Oh. I don't... I could, I could I give mean, you... I guess so. I could try to reward already, you. I don't have much kinda, money, but... Are we already kind of busy? Oh. Well, where is it located? Depending on where it's located, we might be able to go investigate on the way to where we cider. are. The I think we have to. Oh, yes. Let I me just show you here on your map. So, um, it's Kilvin's Cairn is the large uh, mountain to the north uh, east. <laughs> mm. um, yes, it's where the, uh, you know, near the Dwarven clans. Oh, those okay. things. Mm. It is a decent way. I guess we can ask now, or go around and ask to see if they I know think... about Fergus people being here or not. And depending on how much we get on their current location, we can do it. Well, I just... I wonder how emergent the situation might be. If her first inclination to ask for help is the random strangers who show up at her door? It's a trap. Well, that is what like, I that was feels thinking. a little su- suspicious, a little suspect. Well, I mean, if her husband is lost up in the mountains, is that what was going on? Oh, excuse me. I, I'm a man. I'm so sorry. How dare you assume? <laughs> so, so you a- pull off your apron very well. <laughs> <laughs> you pull off your apron. So his husband's presumably stuck there, and boy came back. Yeah. So, I think it'd be best if we just ask first to see where the Turgus people may be, if see if, how far along they might be, just to not lose them. That's what I'm thinking. I, I feel like a murder investigation is kind of pressing. Yeah. Well. Also, it seems like that's in the exact opposite direction of where we're going. Yeah. At least, in, at least right now. Given what we might have heard, this might have either been the goblins or the yeti. Because the dwarves are talking about having come from Kelvin's Cairn or having the orb been from Kelvin's Cairn. Mm-hmm. So it could have been the yeti that fucked them up, messed them up at the, like, over there. And that so might I'm be what that sure is. sure there was a yeti. Yes, yes, six fish. I understand. You well, are we didn't speculative. We did any signs of them. We did. There was steps there okay you may deny reality and you wish six fish however 
for the time being. We can... We cannot give our word that we will investigate the matter. However, if our business allows for some time, which it is not very likely, then we will give an attempt, at the very least, to go see what could have occurred. Uh, absolutely, yes. If, if you can help, uh, please do. Uh, I, I was just visiting uh, Frozen Far Expeditions in Kerr Koenig. It's my husband had friends there, and he always bought supplies from them. Um, it's like an outfitter, mm. so that's what I would... Uh, he'd, I'm sure he would have stopped there in Kerr Koenig on his way. Not to mm. suddenly change the subject, but I hear Kerr Koenig is going through some trouble right now. Oh, yes, they almost all are, it seems, right now. Everyone is having problems. Uh, Kerr Koenig. Oh, yes, I have heard. They've had a bunch of thefts up there, I think. A bunch of... Uh, right, but they don't know? Have you? I guess I, you I haven't have, heard anything well, else. Well, I have... I mean, the, the rumor mill here in Icewind Dale is crazy, because what else do we have to do other than right. to discuss things? But yes, apparently... Uh, People just see things going missing in the middle of the night, and there's no nobody has seen a single thief. It's just things disappear. Sometimes there might be footprints in the snow, but not a single person has been seen. Not a thing, single thief. And the, I know the town speaker is is beside himself trying to find out. Yes, that's poor Dragonborn. <laughs> uh, but that's yeah, all I know about it. Toward my own kind. <laughs> Fair enough. Then I think it's best if we get going for both our sake and yes. potentially yours. Um, yes, if you uh, are able to find my husband, please please help him. I'll try to reward you. Thank you so much. I would definitely Worst. recommend putting out a notice to others as well. I'm going to rely on you all solely for my help. <laughs> <laughs> I just have trust. Oh, I see. It's almost as though this is a pre-generated side quest. <laughs> a journey that we may go on alongside our main one, some may say. Anyway. <laughs> that, is, that is very wise, Hello, maybe. Um, anyways, thank you for, for, for bringing Boy home, and I hope you enjoy the cider. And, and please, please bring Garrett home safely. I miss him dearly. Yes, sir. And you guys can leave Please. the house and back into the cold streets of Targos. Come on. It's almost as though these random occurrences are falling underneath all of our gaze. All, now that we're all together. Funny how it works. Why do we keep saying huh. yes to people? You're the one that said I... yes this time. You had a sip of I... cider and then immediately said, let's go. <laughs> I take fault. <laughs> At least you are understanding. Now let's do what we set out firstly for. <laughs> All right, what do you guys want to do now that you're in the town? Uh, now that the side quest is out of the way, uh, ask around, I guess, to see if anyone has seen uh, Tarog's crew. Sure. Um, yeah, I'll say, I'll, I'm just going to give it to you with Reddish's high in uh, observant feet to that 18 investigation. You go around, you ask, it looks like they did recently head off to Bremen um, the day before. Right, or, so um, we're not too far behind them. Yeah. So you guys can definitely keep going if you would like to catch up. I can just so we, mail them. Sounds like so we could a good time. go to Bremen counterpoint we did get told that this man is an expert with the blade do we think that we could take him i mean if we can get him alone there's fucking four of us oh jumpings are always a jumping until they manage to turn the tides on you oh i'm just look i'm just saying then it's a badass story for the other guy yeah, exactly got, i don't want to add to his repertoire We've got six here with us, who is a master diplomat. So that is I mean, we can always try that first. I like that this title. Fair. Well, don't get too used to it, fish. <laughs> hmm. I love it. Whatever you say. Thank you. Now then. So we'll say. Well, then. 
y'all take off from Targos. I'm assuming there's nothing else you want to do in town here. And head right. towards Bremen. Yeah. Now, Bremen um, is a sleepy town sitting on the west bank of the river near the Lake of Mar Dual Dawn. Um, this is a very small town. It's about 150 people live here. And as you go in, actually, there's even a little map. Hell yeah, maps. Map, yeah. It'll be on the Twitch stream, not on the owl bear. Um, but you can see here, so small little sleepy town <laughs> with a frozen river next to it. Disgusting. And there's a couple of things. There's a small inn. Um, it Ooh. looks like um, that's really all there is here is mm. one little tiny inn. This is uh, perhaps a good place to cash in. There are not many people here. Mm. Yeah, I, I could use a nap. It's so. A <clears throat> Yeah, so uh, you guys arrive. Um, you guys gonna head to the tavern? Yeah. So the Good tavern is called the Buried any. Treasures, and um, you see a middle-aged innkeeper named Cora. She's a human, and and as you come in, she's very excited to see you. She does not seem like she gets many guests around here, um, and she is so excited. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the buried treasures. Come in, make yourselves at home. She lights up the fire and has you on. Oh, um, yes. How? Uh, welcome. How, how can I help you? We're actually here on a venture to meet with a a group of traveling merchants. Oh, really? Traveling merchants? We haven't had traveler merchants in a while. Really? You don't say. No. They should have arrived here either today or last night. And you haven't heard any word. Oh, um, um, um you know, a wagon might have come by recently, but I don't think they stayed long. I... Uh, that's the problem with our town. It's so small. It seems like travelers just get here and they just keep on moving. It seems. Hmm. Hmm. Does she? Does she seem like she's being totally upfront with us? Well, uh, insight. Well, while he's doing that, she'll respond to her being like, "Well, that's a shame. You have such a good personality." Hmm. Oh yes, yes. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, um, she likes the um, pumping up her ego a little bit. Um, you roll that inside check of the five. You don't know nothing. She seems um, totally legit. Totally legit. Pretty legit. The, yeah. <laughs> um, I will say, roll perception as well, reddish. Uh, okay. Oh, nice. Um, yeah. With that, you notice she seems like she's telling the truth, but as you look around the place, it seems like she set up a whole spread. She got the fire going, but you realize really quickly that this place is on its last legs that she's been like, there's very little money here. This place is like basically falling apart and she's doing everything she can to kind of keep the inn going. And she's very excited that you are here because she's not had guests in a long time. So what I'm hearing is there's a side quest here. <laughs> I, I don't know what that How's word the, means. I'm just a business girl. It doesn't seem as though you get very many travelers. Oh, no. Well, I mean, I, it used to be easier when I had my, my son here. There you go. <laughs> son did something... Okay. Is he? Oh well, we're we're doing a lot of traveling ourselves, you see. So if he's lost anywhere, then we could potentially help. 
Oh, oh, um, y yeah, so my, uh... My my son joined a search party for uh, mm -hmm. the speaker. Um, uh, speaker Shale Scar is the leader of our town, and they were missing um, in a blizzard. Um, he's my only and, child. Uh, he went out to look for the speaker during the, in the blizzard with with the town, and the, the speaker was brought back safe. But my son Harar got separated and didn't find his way home till the following morning. He had terrible frostbite and he could barely walk um, oh, yeah. that's oh, unfortunate well it, it's unfortunate it is unfortunate because afterwards he was just mm. he was different after he came back he was he was he was always just sweet boy such a kind kind boy but once he came back he was he had this meanness and he was so awful towards me I don't know what came over him but he was just never the same again um <laughs> I went to his room, and I was looking in there, and I found what appeared to be this, this shard of, of black ice. I don't know what it was, but I, I showed it to him, he snatched it away, and, and he said he'd kill me. His own mother, if Ooh. I ever touched it again, and I don't know. The next day, though, two tieflings showed up here, a male and a female, and they offered Harar to come live in their castle with them. And he told me that he was leaving, and he took the shard with him, and he said he would never return. Uh, the, the tieflings had these um, necklaces on them that looked like the black ice that my son had. I, I don't know where... Um, I don't know where he went, but the only two castles are here is the one in Ker Dineval and the one at Ker Koning. There's a lot going on in Ker Koning right now. There is a lot going. Get That's a very busy place. Uh, so, Seeming. Yes, I, I just miss my son Ter, but I know if he was back here, we could do so much better with the inn. I'm struggling without him. If, if you do come across my son, please, mm -hmm. please help him, and tell him his mother misses oh. him. Right. Well, what is your name? Oh, my name is Cora. Cora. That's right. Yes. My son's name is uh, Harar. What? You're gonna have to spell that one for me. <laughs> it's yes, it's it's a it's a family name. Uh, he always made fun I of me. Heard how wrong. It's H U A R W A R. I spelled that completely differently. H A R W A R. H A H U A H U A R W A R. You see, I'm okay. not very literal. Sorry, I <laughs> I had to teach myself how to write actually. <laughs> I can't read. So, so I'm nice. sorry. I think I'm I'm might be a bit confused. It, it's not uncommon for people to want to leave their small town, especially if they have the chance to go live in a castle. What what makes you think that he needs help? Well, he was always a sweet boy, but then he came back on all frostbitten, and he was sick, and he needed help. But he was so mean afterwards. Just something changed in him, and I. Well, I oh. And then, and then oh, the two <laughs> tieflings came and they, they took him away. He said he'd never see me again. It was completely unlike him. All right. It sounds like you might be dealing with a bit of ne empty nest syndrome. Oh, maybe. Perhaps. I don't think so, but you know, That's I mean. That's really Red. harsh. Red, how about, how about we consider other paths of our journey and not worry about this one quite yet? I mean, it's at this point we can put him on the list of lost folk that we have to go retrieve. It's exactly. It's, it's fine. How many goodies am I gonna have to carry? All Good of them. Deeds never go unpunished or uncelebrated. There is merit in helping those that you can. I'm taking well, their eyes. No, I'm not arguing that. I'm just not convinced that the guy needs help. He left his shit hole to go live in a castle. That sounds like a deal. Yeah. Maybe not discuss that in front of his poor mother. Yeah. Okay, it's fine. She'll get over it. We will do what we can, ma'am. <laughs> Thank you. He's just turning from She's like crying. crying. Uh, do you need rooms or board or, or food or anything? Can I help you? 
Yes, of course. What what do you offer? Oh, we, we have rooms. I have alcohol. I have food. Oh, stop. You had me at the alcohol. <laughs> mm. Please um, do not give them alcohol. I'll take a devil. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, I'll but say no, um, two gold will be enough to cover all four of your stays. And that includes Do room we want board to stay alcohol. the whole night, or are we still shipping off? I think, I think we've been traveling for like. That's true. We over did. eleven hours. Yeah, I could use a good snooze. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it's best if we rest, and then at this point, we might just want to go to Karakone because this group seems to have just gotten here and immediately left. The only way they either went would have been. I think from my room, I've correctly either up or down, but down was a river that led to nothing. Up, led eventually up? towards Cairn. If they Can we see the map up? again, Cody? Absolutely. If they went up, yeah. then that might be where the husband is missing. Because if they went up, then that means that they would eventually get to Cairn or just off map. <laughs> Unless the module takes us off map, then I don't know. Yeah, because they go no to. No metagaming. <laughs> There's no map. It's on the. Uh, I only have the map. Yeah, so we can go from Bremen. They might have gone to Lonelywood, but that's what I'm thinking. If they're if they're operating on a loop, they could have gone yeah. to hit up Lonelywood and then Termalane. Well, we could go in reverse, so we can go to Targos and then Termalane. So then, if they're that's leading from Termalane, the only place that they can go is to us at Targos. And if we get to Termalane and they're not there, then we know for a fact that that's the path that they took. So they're just looping yeah. around. Oh, clever. Yep. That's that's exactly what I'm thinking. I like it. I love now, it. Now, is too stupid to think about this, but he would agree if it is brought up. Um, awesome. So you guys have a nice night here resting, getting some amazing food um, from this um, uh, really lovely, uh, talented uh, innkeep who does a great job. Just, you know, even though she doesn't have much money, she's obviously doing everything she can to just give you all the royal treatment. Um, working really hard, to give you, you know, fresh cups and drinks and everything. Thank you. Yeah. And in the morning, you guys are able to get a leave. Um, is there anything you want to do in Targos or in Bremen before you leave? Uh, yes, because I remember now and it's a new day. I'm going to cast uh, Find Familiar as a ritual. Oh, yeah. And make a little a little snow owl. Oh, cute. oh, how cute. How fitting. I was supposed to start with that, but I totally forgot. That's awesome. And if there's stuff that, like that that you guys, like your characters, obviously have done, like feel free to let me know, and we can probably just do it. But and then I think your characters are smarter than you all are, honestly. The Stanus has a negative. All right, so <laughs> I, I, would hey, like to I do hold. too. <laughs> Uh, I do want to ask: Would the Stanus be able to make any kind of religion trick in relation to? Orel, I think yeah, absolutely. Is, to see if, if she has any relevance to the black guys. To see if there's any ties that he can link absolutely there. Absolutely, roll it. Got you. It's not going to be good, but... Oh! Wow. Hey, yo. Wow. I'm going to say that you do know some about this. You have heard stories with this black ice. You know that uh, over a hundred years ago, a wizard named Akar Kessel uh, found an artifact that was suffused with demonic magic and he used it to create a great giant black tower in Icewind Dale. When the tower was destroyed by a heroic um, set of adventurers a hundred years over a hundred years ago, uh, the magic used to create it fused with surrounding ice. To form what is known as chartolin, which is a non-magic crystalline substance as strong as metal. Um, it's e considerably easier to work with than steel. Um, but people find chartolin deposits around Icewind Dale, and they are suffused with demonic magic. You know that it is not a good thing to be, to like, it's not something you want to spend much time around. Got 
Okay, then the next day, probably like as they're journeying away, just honest, we just uh, on the carriages begin to explain to them all the information, all the relevant information, just like uh, to tell them that like while he was studying his prayer book and such, uh, looking through it, he got a re revelation of information that he had heard long before uh, all this during research of other gods for whatever reason he needed. And then he'll let them all know that it is almost definitely a corruptive thing that occurred to the boy. Right, so in hindsight, maybe he does need a bit of help. I would like to believe, given what I found out. <laughs> All right. It's a much more compelling case than the, the mother made. I try my best. Um, so I'm going to say, as you guys are starting to leave Bremen, you are... Near the docks. And the lake around the docks is frozen, forcing fishers to pull their rowboats up onto the ice. Um, and standing between a pair of boats is a stout humanoid in cold weather clothing. A gray hood hides most of his face, but you can make out a wide nose and long, frosty beard. The stout figure stamps their feet and spots you and waves you all over. All right, good, you're finally here. Get to it, great. so fish ain't gonna catch themselves. He points the boat. Fish. No, fish, no, we have somewhere to be. But six fish is actually walking towards the boat. What did he just say to us? Get in six the boat fish. and do your job, Dragonborn. Right, right, of course, of course. Oh, wait, oh, yes. <laughs> hold, hold on, oh, there seems to be some mistake here. Were you expecting someone? There are fish involved, there is no mistake. No, six fish, we have places to be. <laughs> Why am I getting called? Um, as you uh, as you kind of walk on over a little bit, you see that he has two boats. One named the Pur Burly Ram and the other one named the Pronged Goat. Um, so what do you guys do? He's like, go get that damn fish, all right? No. No. What do you no. mean? I. I mean. Listen, time is better spent angling than yapping. Stranger yell at me on the street. I keep walking. Stranger, <laughs> I paid you fair and square to get in out to catch me some damn fish, and you weren't even here yesterday. You paid me nothing. What's my name? I don't know my. I don't. I keep track of names. All right then, friend. That's I'm sorry. You've got the wrong group. Business practice. We. What he means to say is that we have recently just entered town and we are not the individuals that you have paid to oh, help you you're, here. You're not my employees then. Correct. No. If you still need help catching fish. I will put a hand on six fish's like <laughs> probably like shoulder. <laughs> since I'm not tall tall enough to like put it <laughs> on the actual shoulder. He like puts it on her like shoulder blade. She's like <laughs> like keeping her there. He says, I, well, I, listen, I need fish caught. I don't care if you're employees or not. I'm giving you five copper per fish, all right? Mm. And perhaps a few freebies. Well, now, hold on. That's <laughs> actually not a, a bad payout. <sighs> She's going like, to kind of look at the group and like look down at her stomach a little bit. I'm gonna say how long reddish you notice the two boat you're a fisher guy so you know you look at the boats and you see one of them has like a weird like weird damage to one of the sides of the gun whales yeah like what, what kind bad. of damage like it's like, like scraping it's like a it's like splinters and the wood is like like um it, it's definitely got like some broken wood it still seems seaworthy but it definitely looks like it's been damaged somehow I kind of pointed out to the the guy, what's uh, what's going on with your boat, friend? He's always like, don't, don't you see his goddamn bloody ice everywhere? The last crew were apparently born with pits for eyes because they sailed right into a damn ice flow. I haven't gotten a repair to the gunwale, but she's she floats just fine. I mean, she does seem seaworthy. Have you, uh, I don't know, perhaps thought of hiring folk that are a little more uh, proficient? In well, uh, water that's craft. where you come ha -ha. in, friend. Proficient. Ha -ha. <laughs> I 
Ish, why are you suddenly <laughs> laughing? Are you going hysterical? No, she said they said proficient. I thought it was funny. Yeah. All right, it's, that's, it that's genuinely funny. funny. <laughs> I don't I'm see no need or pay. I wish to laugh. Huh? I thought that would take a lot longer. How long Listen, do you I, need to work for? I, guys, are we uh, we're putting a lot on our plate right now. We could probably get this done and make a fair bit of coin, but looking at our map, we have quite a ways that we need to go. True. As you're discussing this and kind of deciding what you want to do, you hear footsteps approaching you on the creaky dock. Another figure covered head to toe in cold weather clothing has joined you. He wags a gloved finger at the frosty bearded dwarf. He says, you have no honor, burly boar. Pulls down his his um, scarf oh, to reveal a pale half elven face. You're sending these innocent people to their deaths, and for what? A few fish? Dwarf says, oh, "Don't don't mind this rambling fool." And the half elf looks at him. He's like, "Did you even tell them about the monster?" Monster. Hmm. Is there something no stopping you more than uh, just the waters? The dwarf says, don't listen to that hell of Get to work. I'm going to pay five copper for fish, and that's it. You can meet me in the tavern and when you're done. And how much for the head of a monster? He walks away. doesn't even talk to you anymore. Sorry, friend. Could you give us more information uh, pretending towards yes. this monster? He's like, I'm sorry. I, it seems like Grintz doesn't like me very much, or anyone who steps between him and his gold swimming in this lake. My name is Tally, and I'm studying the local animal Tally. life here in Icewind Dale. But I just couldn't stay silent and watch another crew fall victim to the monster of Mare Dueldon. Wait, he's the mayor? No, the lake is the yeah. mayor. Oh. God damn it. Sorry, I was mm. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's fine. It's fine. What uh, what what sort of monster are we talking about here? Well, I've uh, heard reports of a creature in the Mare Dueldon that's been attacking fishing parties. I decided to investigate and found that Bremen boats were the only vessels to suffer these attacks. No, none of the other towns have suffered anything like this. I've been frequenting the docks and talking to the fisher people, and that's when I ran into you. But some of the people say that the monster is the size of an ox. Other ones say it's the size of a house. Um, I've heard some say it's a, some sort of freshwater whale. Another person said it is a, a lizard. Some people said it was a snake. Um, this one was actually found adrift, I believe. This boat, he points to one of the damage on it, with the crew missing. Mm. I'll this. Pull up the map real quick. So, yeah. Oh, I'm looking at the map. I'm trying to look at the map. So, oh, is this okay. a river, or is this is this is the Mare Duldon that the this monster's is the, in? It's the river that leads to the lake. Okay. Yeah, I think. Yeah. So, so we have a local see, monster on our heads, basically. Yeah, you see, nice. Bremen's right here, so, and it's on the inlet to the big lake. Gotcha. Okay. Gotcha. You. So you're saying we, that it's only only this town's boats that's been affected. Nothing coming out of Termalane or Lonelywood? Yes, I've been to those cities and asked about them because I'm trying to f discover what's going on and no one there has heard anything. It only seems like Bremen is being attacked. If we, we do how, this... We know, I'm just curious, how deep is the river here? I mean, is so, it feasible? Because it seems suspicious that if there was a monster, it would only be attacking the one or affecting well, the one town. It is quite suspicious, isn't it? Hmm. Hmm. I here. I can give you. Here's my notebook. I can't really offer you much of my gratitude, but if you are going into the, under the lake, please write down any information you can learn about the monster. Uh, if we can learn what's out there, the people of Bremen would be much safer for it. Yes, yes, uh, we'll figure out the most important piece of information, the color of its blood. Oh, that's... So, I mean, wow. if you guys want to get two birds stoned at once, we could take this boat, 
we were planning on going to Turbo Lane anyway. We could just sail there. And yeah. If we happen to cross a monster on the way, but if nothing else, it'll knock our travel time down by half. Wait, we're the boat. It'll help us understand another as well. Will the boat accommodate our birds and dogs? Just well, slowly just... puts a hand on well, Six Fish's yeah. shoulder and goes, I don't think it will. I'm I'm sure that they it. would be just fine here. We but, can leave them. But Nipsey was Aura. just starting to warm up to me. Oh, well, well, we'll come back for him. We're not abandoning we'll him. Right. We're not, we can oh, leave oh my goodness. He, what if he forgets about me? Oh, I don't think he'd forget about you. There's not a whole lot of you running around. Oh. That is also true. We can leave them with Korra for the time being, and then we can go. It'd give us an opportunity to experience what each other are capable of in battle as well. If there is something to face against. Oh, that's hope so. Perfect. My shoulders are getting stiff. I think every part of me is stiff in this weather. That was inappropriate. How could, well, have you no shame? Wait, I would, oh, sorry. I would say it's impressive no, it's if it's stiff in this kind of weather. <laughs> it's something seems genuinely confused. He's like, what? Ah, he doesn't get what he said. Hell yeah. Three in the hours, 14 time. minutes till the first dick joke. Woo! <laughs> I did it! Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is great. This is great. Um, um, yeah, so we'll say the half elf gives you the notebook to take notes in and walks away. So you I guys can decide. You have to... two boats you can take out to go fishing and maybe semi steel to go on a little journey to Lonely Wood or Tourmaline. Um, steel, we'll bring them back. Yeah, uh, I will say you can leave your. Uh, I'll, I'll say that that Cora at the end would be happy to take care of your animals. Yeah, if I you wanted to I leave will... Cora. Oh, I was just say I've got three gold. I could probably chip her one or two. To watch over. Okay. Them. Then I'll give her. I'll give her four gold. Two gold on top of whatever you're gonna give her. Yeah, he okay. still gives it to her. Like right. tip. She's very excited. Yeah. Um, I give her. I give her two just, gold. She's just like finally my luck. Oh yeah, around. this like four gold to her is that's some that's some money. She's pumped. Oh, I can save yeah. the inn. I can make rent next month. Thank you. Uh, I'll take of such course. good care of, of Gertrude and, and uh, Nibbly. <laughs> this it, is when the chat it. votes if I make a dark joke or not. <laughs> <laughs> the answer is always make the dark joke. Uh, well, I guess you don't yeah. need your son to come back now, huh? <laughs> uh, Damn. Right, can we just take these birds and stuff them right in that void? <laughs> she pretends that she did not hear that. Six fish, let's get you out of here before you end up hit with a frying pan or something. And I think the plan is then just to go towards Mayor Doldon and try to find this sea beast. There you go. Love it. Or maybe it finds us first. <laughs> this music is ominous. We're being hunted without even knowing it. Good. Oh, yeah. All right. So, are we all piling into one boat? They said there was two. Are we gonna all pile into one, or do you want to try and split split the party? Uh, <laughs> splitting the party is always the best idea. I'll, I'll take the ship. Yeah, boat. absolutely. All right, Gurgle's in the sh in the in the damaged boat. Who's going with Gurgle? <laughs> I'll go with Gurgle. All right, All right. Gurgle and six fish. Two and watches and two casters and together. Yeah, I love, I love this. It. Hell yeah. <laughs> yup. Just keep your boat farther from ours. That's yeah. fine. I'll uh, stink. I'll I'll kind of take the lead, um, since I actually have experience with sailing. So do I? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, Should do you? Both of the yeah, I have permission to do the water vehicle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, perfect. Let's yeah, let's absolutely put us both in the same boat. <laughs> this is great. As both of us are like rowing away, like, do you think they're fine? I see them still looking at the water. Oh, I don't know. I mean, Gurgle's <laughs> been with me Why for a while. We should have an idea. 
Six are, they, just like, are they paddling with their hands? Yeah, she's just clinging to the boat. Just water is bad. <laughs> um, so you guys said, are I'm you gonna, are you gonna try it. to do any fishing on this lake? Fishing? Uh, I've I've tackle gear, fishing tackle. Yeah, it, the boats all come with tackle gear too. They're fishing robots. Wait, I so. want to be in the boat with that one. You, you both, y'all have tackle, so don't worry. Uh, but you can definitely fish if you'd like. I guess they got attacked while presumably fishing, so maybe blend in. Hey, that makes sense. I'll, I'll keep an eye out in the waters for anything sure. dangerous. And right. then you merely play the part for the time being. I actually never learned how to fish. So I just know. do like a, a real lazy cast. Nice. Just so that we got something in the water. You guys find a nice little spot to kind of, you know, it looks like there might be some fish around. Are you pretty out there and deep in the lake and you toss your lines in the water and you all uh, do some fishing. Everyone roll survival. I never learned how to fish. Let's see how the survival tells that story. 13. Yep. Oh, nice. Oh, nice. Uh, Gurgle, you catch uh, three knucklehead trout. Uh, reddish, two. Big fish two trout and des, uh, Destanus zero. <laughs> You're having problems catching your trout. I was just kind of like sitting there, like holding the holding the rod. Like, am I supposed to eventually feel something on here? He didn't cast it. It's just there. He's like, is this supposed to just happen? <laughs> the hook's in your lap. <laughs> As you're fishing, um, you see a keelboat approaching, flying the flag of Targos, the town you've been at before. Um, it seems to see you, and it changes course to approach. And as it gets closer, um, you see a, a handful of, of humans on board, um, and uh, the captain slow, you know, belay the sails. And he, he slows down as it approaches. Ahoy there, mates! What you doing out here on the water? I'll kind of just point at the fishing rods. I was going to say, yeah. this would be a point where Six Fish has caught one of her trout and is middle of eating it, basically. She's just like, fishing. <laughs> oh, well, where'd my fish know, go? This is uh, Targos territory, <laughs> so you should uh, take your pools elsewhere. Uh, don't don't be so so quick, friend. We're just here on a, a personal trip. This isn't. I mean, we're not business folk. This is just a a little little breather for us in the midst of a a rather riveting adventure. Oh, sure, sure, absolutely. Um, don't have fun catching your fish, and they all kind of laugh. Sails up, and they pull the sails down, and they also you see them throw out these giant trawling nets and start like circling. <laughs> <laughs> Your boat just trying to uh, scoop up all the fish. <laughs> what a bunch of rude. That is such a good idea. <laughs> um, you see oh, them. I'm about uh, to see ten nets in six fish's inventory by next session. You see I already them, have one. All your fishing just goes down to zero as they're just like catching them all, and they they circle you for about an hour, just scooping up all the fish, and then start sailing off. Something tells me that the monster is not around these parts. Maybe we should trail behind them for if they get a sail. Oh. They took my fish. As... They are a lot larger of a ship. How how long is their boat? Uh, about 40 feet. Uh, as they start to sail away, as we start to see them drop the nets and being fucking assholes about it. <laughs> um, I'm gonna I'm gonna use shape water again and just put like a f fucking three foot pothole in the middle of the lake for them to kind of <laughs> dip in. Or you gonna turbulence them? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just <laughs> for being, being cocky. What the hell was that? I was like, I don't know, sir. <laughs> you just keep sailing on, all confused. <laughs> I like your magic. You're, we're in their head now. We've won. <laughs> it's a moral victory. <laughs> now let's make this an actual one and then, like he starts turning the boat around to start following after oh. um, six fish make roll me a can you roll me a d20 sure can <laughs> the fate die actually uh, how many rocks fall on us 11 11 perfect now everybody um 
roll me a d20. Just straight d20. Roll. Uh, including gotcha. me? Yes, uh, you again. Okay. Where's that? Uh, at the bottom left of your sheet, you'll see like a little di- uh, red die. Oh, like yeah. that, and then you'll see the top die. Yeah. All right. I got rolled a five. The lowest. I think I'm about to. Die. Oh no. <laughs> we rolled a five. Oh. <laughs> Six. Oh yeah. Oh. High five. High, high five. We're, <laughs> we're dying so, together. As um, you're go. sitting there fishing, you see the thing go away. You see here a splash next to you is what appears to be a giant knucklehead trout jumps out of the water near your boat, and. <laughs> It actually is so close to you, it slaps its tail right at six fish. <laughs> and what's your AC? It? What's your AC? Uh, 13. Oh, it definitely hits. Yeah. <laughs> <Give me you. laughs> three piercing damage as it slaps you. <laughs> or three bludgeoning yeah, damage. Damn. Her as it falls eyes were in the as water. big as saucers. <laughs> then she just gets betrayed. <laughs> like, God, is this your gift to me? Yes. <laughs> uh, oh my gosh. Uh, yeah. So it jumps up. You're all like, "What the, what the hell was that?" Um, everyone's kind of shook as the fish falls in the water, and you do notice though, underneath the boat, ripples disrupt the surface of the lake, causing the boat to bob from side to side. You notice a large mass gliding through the dark waters below you. Before Sixfish notices it, she looks over at Reddish. She says, it's, "Okay, okay, your magic is funny when you use it on the other people." <laughs> that, that wasn't his magic, Redfish. Oh, this time is that's right. It's yours. I, no, I think we I, should probably get the fuck out of here. I think oh. we should probably get to a stable enough pond. It seems as though it's near us. That's where she notices. Um, you see a big splash come up next to the boat as this um, large, scaly um, creature, something comes out of the deep and a massive fin slams down. Water kind of pouring over the gunwale just a little bit as the boat rocks back and forth. What do you do? Mm. It's fucking. On which boat did it hit? The one with a. Uh... I'll say yours, just honest. Okay. It didn't hit That's the boat. Good. It hit the water right next to it, causing you to rock violently. But it didn't like damage. Yeah. Anything. Okay. He. We'll kind of try to peer beneath the water from where the like ripples of the creature seem to have been sourced to see if you can see the actual body of it. Yeah, you can roll uh, perception. Yeah, just in its proximity. Boop. 16. Nice. Yeah, uh, as you look down, you see what appears to be an elongated neck and large fins and a large tail. It looks something like this. Oh, breaching oh God. the water. It's a pluridon. <laughs> what six fish said. <laughs> um. Anyone else want to do anything real, uh, while uh, Dasana sees this? I, I say, uh, please, please, I, would like to, I would like to row faster. <laughs> um, you start rowing away and. All of a sudden, you feel um, right ten feet away from the boat. From the boat, you see this head rise out of the water, and it reaches over <clears throat> and just bites the side of the boat. Um, I need to find out how to roll. Maybe I'll have to add a character to the campaign so I can roll dice. Somebody roll me three d six, please. Oh no! I'm fucked. No. Hey. Uh, this is go. a pretty big thing. Maybe we don't fight this. Fifteen piercing damage happens on the rowboat. The rowboat has fifty hit Oof. points. 
um, takes a giant chunk out of the side, and you keep rowing away. What do you what What do you do? Uh, I want to hit it with my fucking stick. <laughs> um, you can definitely try to. Yeah, uh, everyone roll initiative. Shit, the first initiative roll, and I get a four. <laughs> oh, that's a nat it's twenty, right. boy. Yeah, yeah. Are we all rolling? That's on your sheet. It's in yes. the middle, uh, next to your armor class. Initiative. <clears throat> next to my armor class. Yeah, it'll be on your D and D sheet. That should be the very top. Or D &D I think. Yeah, it's at the very top, next to your armor class, to the right of all your skills. Oh. Alright, 19, <laughs> let's go. And reddish got... is that a 20? Sure was. I just want to tame this thing. 20 as fuck. All right, Reddish, you are at the top. You see it take a bite out of the uh, thing. What do you do? Uh, yeah, as it's taking its bite, I just want to... I'm going to take my quarter staff and just fucking whack it. Roll but, it. Hey, that'd be, that'd be enough of that. Uh, that was just the damage, I think. How do I roll the actual attack? It should be to the left of it, like the actual plus to hit. Okay, there we go. Yeah. So a 21 will hit. hit, and then I think it was an eight, Dang. eight damage. Yeah, you slam this thing right on top of the head as it takes its bite. Um, it hurting it quite a bit, it seems. Um, <laughs> it's a very satisfying thunk as it comes down. Uh, <laughs> hell, hell yeah. Anything else you want to do, Reddish? Uh, nope, that's it. Gurgle noise. You see this happening. It's on the other boat next to you, so I'm going to say this is about 10, 15 feet away from you. Yep. What do you want to do? Um, I, I say to Six Feast that we absolutely have to find a way to tame this thing and not kill it. Okay, how are you going to do that? Hmm. That might luck. be difficult to do in the middle of it attacking us, but yes. if you want to try. I don't know. I don't I know. Most can... bears I've encountered don't like to be uh, coddled if they're trying to maul you. Uh... Maybe if you're showing something a little shiny. Hmm, yes. A good bribe always works. Yeah, a good wink. What are you going to do, Gurgle? You saw the slam of the staff go down. You have... What do you do? I try and get the moon's glint to bounce off my glass eye and go into its eye. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. You're trying yep. to. I, I, I guess all you Bruno is inventing the stank eye. <laughs> like from Bible right. Goes West. I mean, it did just get hit with a quarter staff. I don't know how much attention it's paying. Uh, I guess I'll let you roll perception on that or persuasion, but it's going to be like a 15. Persuasion. Jesus. 17. Uh, <laughs> um, you see it. Um, it's you see it make like connection with you. Uh, like it somehow like you, you think it like makes eye contact with your girl noise. Anything else you want to do in your turn? I growl and I roar at it. Well, that's something. Okay, now it. it See if you really know as I'm gonna lower that DC. Uh, he turns his head a little bit more and is paying more attention. Um, as you end your turn, it is now the Plesiosaurus's turn, and it ducks its head under the water. Um, and a oh. moment later, you see it raising its head. It goes right towards Gurgle Noise. Um, it ra opens its mouth. Good, you took it mouth. away from the squishier ones. Wait, it's coming right at us. Right about to bite Gurgle Noise when it stops and stares at you right in the eyes. I raise oh. my hand and touch it right underneath its mouth. And it, says, it looks at you intently, and it looks, and you hear the words. 
I'm listening. Whoa. Oh, I, w I want something. What the fuck? What, what do you need? Speak? I, I mean, it's staring right at Gurgle Noise. Was that telepathic or was it like... Oh, you all heard it. You all heard it said, oh. I'm listening in common. Yeah, she's like, okay, well, that's very I, I, different. I tell it to come that's with us. That's very weird. You have to, you have to do it. <laughs> what do you say? <laughs> you must come with us. I, I must, why must I come with you? You, one of your you people saw my is eye. with a head, with a stick. I can't control him. It's okay, trust me. I have no reason to trust you. What if I just eat you instead? You could, but then there'd be others finding you. I'll eat them too. It does seem like he can eat a lot. I grab its beak. I pull it closer. It's beak? Well, it's mouthing. Um, it's, it's a mouth appendage. Yes. You're going to reach out and lips. grab it. It's quite large. How are you grabbing it? Well, like, you know, it's in my face, my hands under its chin. I just kind of like move my hand and grab its up and down on its mouth. I, I mean, I'm pretty large too. Uh, <laughs> Barely fit in this boat. Um, it, I... I don't know how to roll that. Uh, I don't think that's going to let you just grab its mouth. It does not trust okay. you. Uh, it is going to <laughs> make a... Just roll me a d20. Just make like an attack roll. But it'll just be your hand, so no plus bonus or anything. A two. You try two. to reach the mouth, <laughs> and it just backs up, and it's like, what are... Do you want me to eat you? No, no, I'm just... Want you to trust me? I have no reason to trust you, you Dragonborn. Well, now I tell me one reason know. why I shouldn't eat all of you right now, and send your boat to the bottom of my lake. Because we're on a quest. I think we're out to find something. Might be you. Might not be you. Might be someone else. There's something out there we have to find. And how does that make me not eat you right now? That, I don't know. That's up up to you. Mm, well, it looks like meat's back on the menu. Uh, what? Well, uh, uh, if you're taking, uh, you know, a p opposition to being eaten, uh, maybe we would also like to say stuff? Yes. It turns his uh, neck and off, stares at six fish. May I say, I am jealous of how many fish you get to consume every day. But, um, what exactly is your, uh, is it just because they take your fish? Is that what's going on? Well, I used to just swim around the lake and eat fish. I love fish. That's all I want oh, to do Oh, trust me, I know. Fish. Oh my gosh, they're so wonderful. Mm, until I met a human. His name was Ravazin. He well, claimed to serve Ariel the Frost Maiden. Ravison Whoa. told me that I must do my part to help the Frost Maiden, and he who and she wants the people of Bremen to suffer. I knew mm. nothing before I met this man, and now, now I can think, now I can speak. And I do not want to be a stupid beast again, so I will continue to kill you and your fellow man. You know, I'd rather you didn't. She's gonna kind of look over towards like Distanis and Re and uh, Reddish, the more yeah, you guys can all talk. Uh, castery people. Uh, she's just gonna be like, "Do animals come to be smart suddenly?" I give a thumbs down. Um, anyone can make an Arcana check right now if you'd like. Uh, okay. Yeah, I'm amazing at these. I always succeed. <laughs> oh, nice. 
gonna, uh, Reddish, your oh, wizard, what? your you, your wizard brain's firing off. You know what's up. You know exactly what's <laughs> going on. You realize instantly that someone has cast an, uh, the awaken spell onto this plesiosaur. Mm. Um, and that the effect is permanent. <laughs> a permanent awaken spell. Very well. Right. Are we still in combat? <laughs> um, I, like, I, no, a me, fucking long ass six seconds. No, it, we we we, we, we pause there talking. Yeah, just it's basically the police's store's turn. I guess it's Destanus' turn next. If you want to do something, Destanus. So yes, uh, Destanus' okay. turn. Uh, Destanus does not immediately like it because it's apparently blessed by the fucking snow bitch and well we know how much we don't like her so I'll hold an action to cast toll the dead we're, we're, we're hold on we're, combat's still in session but we're just like in a weird pause moment where it's like talking so no oh, he's still holding his action to do that he's right, still gonna hold fine. like the magic it's stable it's that's a cantrip totally fine. I can just hold it. um but so in case it acts or someone else to go against it he would, that's what he's doing right but if you guys want to talk or do anything right now you can to the the creature don't think you have to wait for your turn is what i'm saying there's a little pause yeah. in, the, in the action for like the the talkings uh so that's what he said uh Destanus, you're gonna do this anyone else want to talk or do anything before six fish's turn six nope. fish what do you do um so i guess then i'll use some of my turn then to uh see if uh either of them knew the answer to the question um does like do animals just gain sentience and then uh see if what their answer is because i guess six fish is still trying to decide whether or not like this is a thing that they are that we are killing now that it has spoken to us um reddish so it's really just reddish and gurgle noise that know this right now that it's awakened spell right. unless reddish is going to tell everyone are you right. asking the question? Like, right? Yeah. So she she asked like to the to your guys's boat. She was like, "Does this kind of thing happen?" Basically, like she's confused. Uh, Reddish will yell back, uh, "No, not by normal means. This isn't cool." <laughs> so it's like, spook. Like, which uh, sp spell spell? Yeah, uh, the magic kind. Okay, does that does that wear off? Nope. Oh, hey, well there you go, Mister Sea Monster. You don't have to worry about it going away. Mm, what do you mean? The druid said that if I did not continue to fight and kill the people of Bremen, that this would go away. Hmm. You're telling me the druid lied to me? Yes. I don't know. Oh. Uh, make a persuasion check. Beat a 14. 20. <laughs> <laughs> You're saying to me right now that I do not need to fight you and I can just eat fish and continue to be smart? Yes, yes, actually, that's, that's, that's what it sounds like. If this is not a thing, well, yeah. Well, that, that actually eating sounds... Eating fish is so much better than people. That, it really is. I don't even like to eat you. It's like, it's kind of gross. You all taste like, like, like pork. I, I just want chicken, fish. But... Wait a second. You just want fish? I got some fish. I got some fish. I give them to you. I I can catch my own fish. I just I well I feel very silly now. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> well, um I guess uh no harm, no foul. Sure. Yeah. No foul at all, no chickens ever. Alright, yeah. well I will uh try to avoid destroying your your boats in the future. Oh, 
Well, well, I'm glad we didn't have to fight in the water. That could have been really bad. Yes, I could have easily destroyed both of your vessels and sent you to the bottom of the lake. It's it been yes. quite easy for me. So mm. this this worked out well for you, it seems. Mm. I can't swim. All right. Well, That's a thank you for telling now. me this. Apologies for the uh, confusion there. I didn't mean to uh, al alarm you. No, you're good. <laughs> this has become a very pleasant conversation. <laughs> um, all right. Well, he kind of waves his little flipper. I'm assuming you're all letting him go. <laughs> his reddish can uh, yeah. attack again anyway. <laughs> yeah. Why? I think he's just around. All right. Actually, oh, wait, awkward. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, yes. What, the, what do you want to be called? Oh, call me Flippy. I love that. Goodbye, Flippy. Wait, perfect idea. What if we sick? What if we sick him on the other crew? Wait, that's true. <laughs> hey, so these guys were kind of mean to us, Flippy, and and they have a shit ton of fish. They have, they yes, fish? they yes, it's so much it fish. Oh my fish. gosh, like all the fish that was in this area. Oh, which which way did they go? That way. He just like under the, the water. He's gone. Way. He's gone. Hi, like. Flippy. <laughs> You just see a black shape just moving unsettlingly fast under the water. Too fast. She's going to put a hand on Gurgle's shoulder and just look at him and be like, I never should have doubted you. <laughs> oh my goodness, that was awesome. I just throw the fish that I caught back out into the water. <laughs> Um, awesome. We are going to end it there, guys, for tonight with this amazing <laughs> session. What a great first session we had. So proud of y'all. You crushed it. <laughs> uh, that was so good. Super fun. Hell yeah. Okay. So what we're going to do is this is going to be a weekly thing. We'll be here next Thursday to keep the story going. Um, I'm excited. This is going to be very up to y'all to decide where your party wants to go. As you've noticed, you're going to get a fire hose of quests. That is going to keep going. You don't say. Do not worry. It's it's just going to you're going to get so many goddamn quests. So we're going to have to have a nice way to track them. Um maybe I'll find a way to track it on our like start screen or something, but you're going to let a lot of quests, so get ready to deal with those quests. Um and be ready to really to find out where the party is going because I'm just going to give you stuff and you're going to have to make decisions on what y'all want to do um, with that Hell information. Yeah. So that very self-directed, very much, you know, like you're looking at that map and figuring out where to go. You're going to get a lot of that. So um, everyone levels up to level two as well. Yay! Congratulations. Yay. Yay. Not even get any, you didn't even get any combat today. You goose. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, can I we just take a moment? To I'm appreciate sorry. the fact that our fucking barbarian is the face of the party. I love that. I love that for us. Yeah, fully. I had full faith that she would convince the goblins completely. Uh, thank you, everyone on the audience side. We're also gonna I'm just gonna add a bunch of stuff. I'm gonna do things where you guys can put in points to give people like a plus D4 or different things to, to do polls. Oh my gosh, that's wanna, gonna be so fun. Yeah, I'm gonna add a bunch of audience participation. Hopefully next Heck time yeah. we gotta work on that, but that's the idea. So thanks everyone. I appreciate you all. You're all awesome. I love your faces. Thanks for being here today. I will see you all next Thursday for some more Dungeons and Dragons. Heck yeah. Goodbye, everybody. Bye. Yeah. That was me rolling for my hit dice. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. <laughs>